Good after two two. Good eva two two. Good morning two two. Welcome to From the Two Two Bat Cave, episode fifty two two. I'm your host, Red Thunder two two Adam Gerard, and joining me are my cohorts and compadres in crime, the Honey Badger Terrio two two. Two two. Matt the two two Richens. Two 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 two. And the two two Knight Braden Ahern. Nice two two see you. That was, a that was horrible. That was... Oh, come on! <laughs> that was pretty bad. That was, that was, now, that was hard. some of you at home might be asking what's with all the tutus, guys? Why are we all... Everybody stands up. Why are we all tututed up? You can't see it. Your tutus like John Cena, we can't see it. Can't see it, yeah. Now, the answer to that is very simple. We were set a challenge a little while ago, and from the date this video goes up, which you will find on the screen either below me where I'm pointing right now or conversely across the screen the date that that was as I don't know right now before it's edited when that will be but through the magic of editing it will be on February 18th so <laughs> this episode was challenged for us to do episode 52-2 in two twos in order to raise money for charity so if you would like to donate even a dollar please head over to the address that's on the screen now and donate to one of the two charities that we have put uh, a pledge towards they would be the animal welfare league and autism australia and yeah just just we're not getting anything out of this all we want to do is help other people and have a bit of fun along the way so share this with your friends share this with your family and uh and let, let's make let's make an impact in this shall we anyway make moving on to the show itself i'm true exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry moving on to the show itself gentlemen how are we this week how to 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 be the Sweaty. Too, too I damn sweaty. I think I'm uh, too, too swimming through plunge custard. Oh. At the moment, like, that's how much I'm sweating. I feel like I've just taken a dive in the too, too plunge. It is, it is. You can still, your tan is still rocking from last week. Oh, I can see on the camera. It's <laughs> I still feel it. quite strong. Just, I just got a... I still got a wristband. <laughs> it's come through Not quite that you, no, you, you can see it. You can see it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, for those of you that aren't in Australia or don't know at the time this comes out, it's like 40 degrees or it's it's 8 o'clock at night and it's nearly 40 degrees. I'm done. I'll well, let just... that sink in. <laughs> there's, there's a good That's degrees point. Celsius. For those of you in America, I will even do the fucking math for you right now. Just a minute. 40 degrees is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. 104 degrees. It's pretty fucking hot. Too hot. Hot damn. Too hot to trot? Pretty much. Too hot, can't come down. It's in Too... your head and it's all around. Too, too uh, are you with me now? Mm -hmm. With the taste of your lips, you're paralysed, you're toxic, I'm slipping under. It's so only 24 saying? degrees for you, just saying. Just a few things before we get into so I guess a little bit of a preview. We'll have uh, TV coming up, we'll have X-Men First Class coming up. But before we get into anything, before we get into anything, before Matt even gets into making whingy noises. Oh, we're having this discussion, are we? Whingy noises? I was, I was, I was getting excited for First Class. Oh, that's right. Let's, let's go. Son of a bitch. I was simply going to say... Let's make things real. Let's talk some emotion. Let's let, let's peel back the fourth wall. Break the fourth wall. Peel back the curtain. Whatever you want to call it. Pay no attention behind the, behind the man behind the curtain. You can pay attention to him this time. Let's talk about something this week that collectively, for the first time in I don't know how long, made all four of us fan yell the fuck up. Let's talk Batman versus Superman. Ooh. Oh, yeah. there's, there is there is something I do want to mention. There is something baking in the oven. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, no, there's... <laughs> it's for a certain member of the Just Us League. He's a new member. Well, newish. About, what, four to six months? Too many months. Too many months. <laughs> anyway, I would like to get something on the record. On Fuck this 50 you, Thunder. Second of <laughs> you can suck my dick. You can't get me Thunder because you just got fart. <laughs> I had to, I'm not Jennifer Lawrence, sir. How dare you? Well, Jeff Lawrence. I was not saying all this. <laughs> so, is there something I'd like to get something on record, Matt? Is there anything you'd like to say in regards to uh, a certain man playing uh, Batman? Is there anything you uh, want to say there? Huh? A man? Champ? He's more than just a man. He's hmm? a bat flick. Hmm? Anything you want to say? Anything you want to take back? Hmm? What is it, my boy? Not taking anything back. Possibly? Hmm? You're not taking anything back. I'm bringing it back up before it's running. <laughs> so you, so you, you are still, still maintaining maintain that, that Ben Affleck's not. You, you no, wait until no. the film comes out. So you are taking it back because you were the one who was like, 
Ben Affleck, you know, if I took a shit on my hand and like smeared it on my face and then went into like Studio 21 and got professional photos took and then, then took those photos home, ate them, shit them out, then pasted them back together, that would be a better Batman than Ben Affleck. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm, Terry. I'm, I'm Terry, pretty sure you said something along Brain, those lines. Do you remember him going on the record and saying something like that? Well, on the record, I believe the words were, I am going to have to eat a huge piece of humble pie when it comes to Batfleck. That was in our chat, but before, we're talking, talking months yeah. ago. When he first oh, when, we, ago. When, the, when this thing first turned up in our studio, <laughs> and we were like, oh, is that a beer? What is that? We, when that first turned up, was he not all like, oh, Ben Affleck, man, I've taken, I've taken media shits than that guy's an actor, and Daredevil, oh, oh I, I yep. fucking drilled through my disc. If this guy's Batman, I may as well just fucking just make it shit man and call the film shit man and Robin. I still don't like. I remember the Daredevil. conversation. It happened. We're not saying record. that we don't. We're not saying that you have to like Daredevil. What you said, Jesus, you're Chip, becoming Christopher. You can't say angry. You're becoming Christopher Walken. You said that Ben Affleck as Batman was going to be horrible. So, what's your opinion now? Like, because there is a pie. Are you sure? There will be pie. <laughs> I'm just wondering. <laughs> Like, is it just is for it, you, or...? <laughs> well, that's the thing. I don't have to eat it because you're the dumb shit. No, you don't shit. have to, but you do because you're the badger. Yeah, I was going to say, he doesn't have to eat it. He will. I will. <laughs> but there's a difference between me and you. I will gladly eat the pie, but you have to eat the pie. <laughs> this is the most retarded conversation I've ever Basically, heard. what I want is Matt to turn around and say, with deadpan, in the camera, I was wrong about Batfleck. <laughs> That's hard, hard, hard to do. That, I'm, I'm looking at it. It's, it's hard to say, but I am. Okay, okay. I'm so serious. <laughs> I am looking forward to Ben Affleck's Batman. I'll take that. Why? Time. Chip. Well, from what I've seen of the trailer, it looks fucking phenomenal. Why? Hmm? Give me some meat. What has made you change your mind? Like, because you were at, you were so adamant that you were like, man, this film is negative a hundred stars just because <laughs> Ben Affleck is in this bitch. All right, you you were the yeah, one. That, was, let's let's yeah. be real. You were the one who initially, before we watched it again, was like, man, Man of Steel was a great film, and Ben Affleck is gonna fuck this up with this sequel shit they put him in. That was the stance you had, was it not? Yeah, so you like tell that. me, why have you suddenly come round to the camp, G- Gerard, where it's simply. Affleck is the best. Is the best Batman we're ever gonna have. Please do it for like fifty years. Do it till you look like Clint Eastwood, and then do old man Batman. Uh huh. That's when you do Batman. <laughs> uh, Dark Knight Returns. Rises. Dark Knight Rises. You never do no, Dark Returns. Knight Returns. No, it's Returns. No, no, yeah, no, you do Returns. Returns. Never do Rises. Sorry, my bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do Returns. That's hot. You you banged out there for a second. It's too hot. I can't come down. <laughs> you just went full rises. I did. Never go full rises. Never go full rises. <laughs> never go. Full go full Raj, but not rises. rises. <laughs> <laughs> all right so like so we can get past this fucking conundrum or not conundrum but like impasse impasse yeah get past this bullshit i'm looking forward to batman versus superman batman's voice modulation in this movie is probably the best batman voice i've ever heard throughout my mm-hmm. fandom of batman mm-hmm. like i Word I'm gonna piss you. I'm gonna, like a motherfucker. I, I'm gonna piss you off because I actually liked Christmas. Fan, you was the bomb in Phantom Show. <laughs> <laughs> I actually liked Christian Bale Batman in in Begins and Night, Night, uh, yeah. The Dark Knight. Yeah. Um, I thought he was the best Batman that I'd seen well, so far. We, you, uh, so far, you haven't pissed me off. Um, but yeah, you got the levels he was at. We're like this '66 Batman is shit. And like, not meaning it ironically, he was. This this 66 Batman is shit. But we swung that pendulum around. We did. He ate some humble pie. Well, he ate actually, a bit too I much ate, of the humble pie. Too much. Pie. <laughs> um, too much. Yeah, he sorry. went back for seconds, he was like, that was no, actually pretty tasty. Uh, yeah. Just in case. This humility. Just in case. <laughs> some bitch. I've been humble a long time. <laughs> moving <laughs> along. Moving along, people. Um, yeah, the voice modulation looks fucking... It sounds phenomenal. Like, I heard... I watched the, the official trailer, and... Um, it would terrify me if I saw Ben Affleck dressed as Batman with that voice in an alley saying... He's like 90% neck. 
I know. It's fucking In fact, I'm unreal. pretty sure he's old. Um, Nick. the other, the Nick other, man. the other part, that, <laughs> the other part that started to sell me on Ben Affleck as Batman was when we only had a few leaks of the trailer, and you saw Bruce Wayne running after the. the oh yeah, in the in, Metropolis where he in, runs into danger. Where he runs that that scene of him just mm-hmm. as he's running into the cloud, just going like this. I was just like, holy shit, that is Batman. Yep. Um, and the look on his face when he's holding the little girl and looking up and seeing Zod, Zod destroying with the, um, the with gravity, maker, yeah, yeah the stupid he's... shit. But it's like that, Batman. that from that, that sold me on Batman. Yep. Ben Affleck as Batman is. He sold. See, I'll, I, he, he'd already sold me the point where I was like, I, I, I'm like, I'm watching this trailer, and we, we've obviously played it mm. already at this point, so everybody at home has seen it as well. I'm watching this trailer, right, and. I'm blown away by a couple of things in it. Firstly, <laughs> like, his Batman, that is the most I've ever... Like, I looked at that and I, I fangirled out because it looks and it's... Like, in my head, that's how Batman sounds. Yeah. It's just this deep guttural, like, I'm going to fucking kill you kind of sound. Yeah. But he looks like Batman. A tank. He... Fo- if you pick up a comic book and hold it next to the screen, you literally go, like... He's Sam. He's one and Sam. The jaw as well. It's the jaw. <laughs> Not that, it's but what sold me more than anything, his Bruce Wayne is perfect. It's the, 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 the smirk. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, the, 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 smirk. the, the uh, smirk and the coldness in the eyes. What do you, what do you, oh, what's your stance on the bat vigilantes? The like, smirk, yeah. And then the whole, like, uh, yeah, my, this city and I don't really respond well. We don't have a good history with people who run around dressed like clowns. Yeah. Freaks dressed up like clowns, yeah. <laughs> it was just like... <laughs> yeah, shots were, <laughs> shots were fired. And that bit where he's hanging up and like he wakes up and he looks to his left, there are guys that hang out, and then he's just kind of like, like that to me. I'm like, that's, that's Batman. Batman. He's calculating even, how yeah, he's like, going to get. Fact it. That he gets to swear in this film, that's awesome because that to me feels like Batman is. But Batman is the one when he sees Doomsday would be like, <laughs> shit. I like it. I like how he's like in the 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 Batmobile swings around <laughs> and like. I don't know what happens because we haven't seen a whole lot of it, but the, the top's open, Doomsday comes out, and he's ready to fire, and he's just like, I'm going to defend this as much as possible. <laughs> I believe it's um, Doomsday is about to blow some sort of nuclear fire blast. That's what Wonder Woman does yeah. to stop. Yeah. Who, while we're on that, looks like her in the face, but goddamn, if that's Wonder Woman, then, like, the mascara has a serious famine problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so far, there's, there's no Amazon woman let's, there. Let, let, let's be real. Compare Lady Sif and Thor yes. to Wonder Woman. Which one looks like a warrior? Yeah, Sif. 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 Wonder yeah, Woman Sif. to me looks like a model who literally either Zach, uh, Zach, Zach Wilder, no, not Zach Wilder, Zach, no. Zach, Zach, Zach Schneider, Schneider, either spends his time masturbating to, yep. or literally, like, because I take one of two ways. Oh, I think this chick's really hot, and I tug my dick when I look at her, so I'll cast her, or conversely. Oh man, we just want like the boobs bring guys in to see films. She's model and boobs that will work. Yay! Problem casting is solved. Yeah, I mean yeah, the only thing like I'll uh, Mr. CrossFit posted a while ago like um, him being a CrossFit junkie. Uh, posted like possible. He's, he's, he posts paleo life every day. Don't we? Mm. He represents that paleo life. And that that's cross, it. That's that it. That, that with the medieval bacon. Um, <laughs> He posted some CrossFit uh, stars or athletes, top hand athletes, with the uh, superhero, and he actually posted uh, Wonder Woman quite correctly. If I could find the post, if I knew ahead of time, I could mm-hmm. find the post. But you know, a little bit more meat on the thighs, shoulders, you know, a bit more soldier. I built like a Gina Carano. Yes. Would have been a bit like a slightly thicker than Ronda Rousey, but they're yes. not unfeminine. They're just mm-hmm. thick. In fact, just cast Ronda Rousey. I watch a lot of old school wrestling, as everybody knows. Everybody mm-hmm. watches this. Knows I'm a wrestling fan. Mm-hmm. I would go so far as to say. China is the closest thing I've ever seen. Yes, to one absolutely. Because she was because even six Cena ago. looks. Uh, China's five eleven, and she was a legit one hundred and thirty kilos of yeah. muscle. Yeah. Um, like even uh, Lucy even Lawless. Lucy Lawless as Cena still looked skinny, mm-hmm. whereas China is like you see China next to dudes, you're like, God damn, that is a big but, woman. But mm-hmm. even if you had uh, Lucy Lawless's frame, yeah, she wasn't small, Wonder but like yeah, comparatively, yeah. Absolutely, Lucy Lawless would look fantastic. It'd be more than a Wonder Woman. See, the thing is, uh, I'm more than willing to give Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot uh, a shot, but uh, one thing I can't can't uh, forgive um, is Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, oh, I, I am give, on that. I am on that hate train. Get get to Jesse in a second. Yep. I, I just want to finish up on, on Wonder Woman just quickly. Of course um, you do. <laughs> Horn bear. I, I, the, the problem that I have with it is, 
that everything else in this film looks like it's ripped from the pages of a comic. Yeah, absolutely. Why is she not? Why is every other character literally it looks like they'd be like, I'm looking right now on our on our home page, the dad and I has mm-hmm. not up our new header card. Mm-hmm. And looks it fantastic. Is Superman, what I'm saying. Wonder Woman, Batman in the, the fire yep. scene mm-hmm. behind him from that. Mm-hmm. One of these things is not like the other one, and it's the fact that, yeah, on the head she looks perfect, but the rest of her does not look okay. like Wonder Woman. And Skinny. I don't understand why Eric's, everything Eric's, else Eric's, in the comic, because, I mean, if, if everything you, else yeah. literally looks like the comic. I mean, if you think about all we've had with DC and Marvel and all the heroic uh, fe- uh, things. Scarlett Johansson is the right body shape for this. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, didn't you? No, but, like, you look at but they're still very feminine, though. Like, she's not, like... For me, Ronda Rousey fanboy, you can cast her. That is a perfect body type for someone who's a fighter and stuff like yeah. that. Right, so you basically take Gal Gadot's head and put it on Ronda Rousey, boom, Wonder Woman. Yeah, but well, Gal Gadot's head on China is Wonder Woman. Hmm, but um, a lot of the time we get females who are petite and blah, blah, blah. This is the, the first it's real superhero female we've had. This is the superhero female. <clears throat> so this is, this is the female equivalent of Batman. Yes. Yeah. The problem is... The... Hollywood execs? Well, not only that, it's the what, what media is portraying as a woman. And if they're trying to empower women, this is ex- this is going out to women who look who want to look like this. Mm. Yeah, but in a and world where we've got Ronda Rousey selling our pay per views and inspiring inspiring so many kids that little kids dress like she was the most popular little girl costume for Halloween. Yeah. So that is that is the, the current female inspiration. And I know that this was shot a while ago, but mm. still the writing's been on the wall for a while that we're okay. going towards an actual proper. Hashtag Divas Revolution in real world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that this is the perfect time to do it. Yes. And now the problem is now they're stuck because I don't think this chick can gain weight. Because Maybe. it's because advertising and media says oh, yeah, that's, that's what, what a woman that's like. what a woman woman Absolutely. looks like. It's just not just Wonder Woman, but that's what a woman looks like. Just gives me the shits. All right, now let's move on to talking about Lex Luthor. Do we have to? Underwhelming Lex Luthor. Why is Lex first of all not apparently? Bold at any part of this film, mm. even the though ginger. he's clearly wearing a wig. Yeah. And why is Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor, this smooth talking billionaire who can get into every woman's pants and is just so intense to stop Superman? Superman. Why am I Lex Luthor? <laughs> I do not want to mess with him. Figure me out, the right helps copy. Figure me out, Superman. I don't and know. That bit why. of like, the red bit of the end, because like you get it for an act. At mm-hmm. first, I watched the first bit. I'm like, okay, you shit. Maybe this is an act. But then he's got Lois on a roof, where clearly we all know he's meant to be. He's meant to be the film meant to be the villain at that point because she knows it. Mm-hmm. And he's still flying and flying. And Lois, they got a Superman. <laughs> I think they might have Ezra I mean, Miller this one. That, that, that's a three syllable word oh, for people yeah, with small eyes. Can't, yeah, when people with small eyes don't understand. Which say, Brent? They have. Yeah, Ezra Miller's the shit out of it with, it, with yeah. him. Yep, the, the Ezra Miller of this one, I think. Now, he hasn't I said just... much, he's been quiet. <laughs> what, is, what does the Dad Night God say about Batman vs Superman? Well, I love the bloody trailer, this is great, and I think it really mixes up um, a few different uh, storylines. When the initial teaser came out, the 50-second long teaser with uh, Superman coming down and ripping the cowl off uh, our mate Bat- Batfleet, uh, I did read a lot of things online where people were predicting that that was actually a nightmare sequence. Nope. That he was, you know, I don't believe it is either nope. myself. No, I don't think um, but they're actually calling, they're actually calling that suit the nightmare suit. Um, nightmare starting with a K though. Yeah. Interesting. I, uh, I, I am more like, I if that's the case, but that was that was involve, red sun all over. It's got to involve Scarecrow. If it is a nightmare, I don't think it's a nightmare. I personally think that where they are is, uh, fuck, what kind of think of the name? Where is Black Adam from? Oh, Samaria. Oh, no, this is Samaria. Samaria. Um, no, it's all right. It starts with an S. Okay. While he looks that up, though, that uh, that look on Bruce Wayne's face when he takes off the cow is like, "How fucking dare you?" Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Amazing. Well, I, I, I kind of have a feeling wrong. that he let him do it. Hmm. 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 I don't know. It just, it just, it just doesn't seem very like that's something that. I mean, he knows that he'd probably be able to see who he is anyway because he's got X-ray vision. So, mm-hmm. what's like, taking the mask off him? But do? it may Maybe. also be a lead line cow. Hey. It may also be a lead line cow because you only need. Yeah, that is true. That is true. You only need like a millimeter uh-huh. of lead, and he can't see through it. Mm. <laughs> but that whole that whole scene is red sun all over. Yeah. Um, I think this is a big mixture between 
Red Sun, Dark Knight Returns, and um, the animated movie Justice League War. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Where uh, they... And I, I like the fact that there's not... Like in Justice League War, they just sort of all come together. They're already established heroes, but they haven't established a team. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really like that. I like that that's the way that they're starting. They're doing it. It's inverse Marvel Cinematic Universe. Good. Mm-hmm. They're starting with the the building of the group and then going off into their other movies. It's really good. But that'll make that. it better because um, then yeah, when you bring them back together, you've already got the Avengers the crossover. one out of the way. Yeah. You've already done it. Yeah. 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 And we don't we don't need more movies with origin stories. Like, nope, how yeah. many origin stories have we seen of Batman? Exactly. No. Don't need nothing. In fact, we're getting a whole teenager. Well, it's better that he's already been and gone in that time, uh, I think. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Kandak is where Black Adam's from. That's my gut feeling looking at that. I really got the feeling they were in Egypt. Mm-hmm. And that would make sense considering there's a Black Adam movie coming up and considering that The Rock said that he's getting ready to kick Superman in the nuts. I thought they were cousins. <laughs> we'll get into that later. <laughs> but, uh, but considering that that was happening, that his Black Adam film wouldn't start shooting theoretically for like three, four years. Mm-hmm. The only logic there to me says... If you're going to kick him in the nuts, it's because you're in the film. Yeah. So if you're in the film, it's going to be somewhere... I mean, it's the Middle East, so it's going yeah. to be sandy and shitty. That's pretty much where it looks like they are. Yeah, because yeah. also I'm trying to wonder about the um, the soldiers that we see, if that's like almost like a little militia, because Lex seems to work with Superman for a little while. Sets him up with a little private militia to find out. No. Because they've got the Superman logo on their shoulders. I think it's more, yeah, they do. I think it's more of a government thing. Considering in this movie Superman appears before a government inquiry, Senate. Yeah, we don't know at what point in the movie though. That could See, be... I reckon Lex sent Batman and Superman against each other. Yeah, um, I think I'm not so sure too. why. To distract them. It's yeah. To distract them because at the same time he's working on the. I personally working think you set, you set them against each other so you can build the weapon to kill Superman in the hopes that Batman will weaken Superman enough that you can kill him. That's what yeah. I would say that the, probably the ultimate aim here is. Um, the one thing I will say that I, I, I dislike about this tra- I dislike about this trailer, which is hard to say because, I mean, it's hard to dislike this thing, but it's more for me, I guess it's an irritant and something they're doing just too consistently in Hollywood at the moment for my liking. That is, this film is obviously CGI heavy, right? Mm-hmm. Yet yep. they release a trailer like six months before the CGI is finished. So what you're seeing there is... Raw mm, no, not raw, but I would say mid, middle rendered. Yeah. Mm. Like not even into beta yet yeah. sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And so it looks it looks good and it makes me realise, yeah, it's certainly going to look better when it comes out. But at the same time, it hurt, I think it hurts you partially that you're not releasing your final polished uh, final polish product yeah. as the the trailer, the, yeah. the meat and veg, as it were. I think the, the, the main part that springs to mind is when Batman's on the side of the the wall yep. and he shoots off just before that explosion I, was, I saw that at that point I was just like oh it's uh, not quite the right frame right it looks a bit tacky yeah it looked it looked cool it looks cool, look cool when it's finished but it will yeah something like you, that you'll like see the, you'll see it with the other other side of it Doomsday, other side I don't of the think Doomsday is finished either because his rendering doesn't look quite right like when I think it would stop doing that that makes a really loud noise I'm do apologise the thing won't get uh, I, one oh. thing I, the one thing I do like the one thing I like the most about this movie is they're, they're bringing back Zod. <laughs> and his shitty beard. Well, as, a, as a corpse? Zod, yeah. That makes sense because I can see what... The, in the comics, basically, Doomsday is originally made as the Kryptonian atom bomb, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you go to war with somebody, you just drop it. You mm-hmm. drop the Doomsday in there, and then you fuck off for like a week, and then you come back and the planet's yours, and you've just got to recase him. And, yeah. Uh, he ended up buried under the Earth's core years before Superman like decades before Superman yep. and then during Superman's life he breaks out and the comics breaks free goes on a rampage kills Superman and then we get the the four Superman the, the return of Superman they're not going that route with him here obviously but um, he is still Kryptonian meaning that the shit that sticks out of him is like Kryptonite and he can hurt Superman yeah that's why Zod is still in this because I think whatever that this abom- abomination they're making to call Doomsday is He's filled with cells. Zod's blood. Yeah. And so because he's got Zod's blood in him, he's Kryptonian, thus meaning he gets partially the power Superman does, so punching him or hurt. And I think that's what that's what it's going to come down to, is that 
Superman and Batman fight each other. This thing turns up. They realize they've been on the wrong side. That's what Alfred's whole point is going to be in this film, is that you're fighting the wrong side, sir, as he always does. Then they become friends and fight this thing, and the reason that you need both of them is because without Batman, Doomsday kills Superman. Plain yep. and simple. But yep. Batman, Batman will take out Doomsday. Yeah. That's why Braden asked me what's the gun that he's holding. In my opinion, it'll be shooting kryptonite bullets and he will take down Doomsday. Yeah. And it'll be something along the lines of Batman saves Superman. Superman will save Batman at one point. Batman will ultimately save Superman. They'll shake hands and then they'll do the thing. I guarantee you... <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be that scene where it's like, Batman's going to Superman. You know this is a trap, right? He's like, yep. Oh, no, don't expect me to save you, man. It'll, it'll end on the <laughs> it'll Justice like, League. Yeah. Oh. It'll end on the Justice League thing where they're all, they've got the whole crew together and whatnot, and then the, um... Aquaman. You know, if, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll call, yeah, well, Aquaman's in this film. They'll all be together, and it will end simply with the, the all the, uh, Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, all posse in, in their long line walk, where the Justice League, yada, yada, and then, um, speak about Batman will most likely say, well, call me if you need me. <laughs> I can see them doing the JLL animated yeah. universe joke because it's so good of uh, call me if you need me well will you call will call us if you need us I, I won't, won't need you yeah. <laughs> yeah so that that's where I see this ending so yeah this this looks pretty damn good and uh, I didn't think I could get more pumped for anything than Deadpool next year Deadpool was hands down going to be my film of the year this thing <laughs> oh, I mean I haven't seen much of Dead, uh, much of Deadpool yet that I hadn't already seen like in the, the early yeah, test footage yeah. stuff, so mm-hmm. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing those that. Two, those two, those two, role. those two are going to be the, like, the highlights. Of the, oh, that's going to be sensational. Which Super is Wall which is great, great because it's going to be like we've got you know three, four fantastic films coming out next year. Yep, and then we got Suicide Squad. <laughs> but my hope what's is squad? that what's it, what's I, it, I what's don't know, squad? some shit squad. A what squad? Syphilis squad. Oh man. <laughs> my my hope is though that uh, mm. by the looks of it. DC are going dark, which I don't have a problem with. DC Comics are dark. They're supposed to be dark. I'm hoping that, like, I know Marvel is the light, but I'm hoping that this kind of proves to Marvel that they can... Their, their t- Marvel's TV is so edgy, but their films are so fucking, like, let's be G-rated. Yeah. doop doop before the kids. And it's like, come Quick, on. let's hire a clown. Get it, me it, Chris it's got, Pratt. It's, got, it's a comic book, therefore <laughs> we're going to have kids watching it. So yeah. we can't have flowing. Whereas, you know, that's my big hope for Deadpool is that that, that makes so much money. Oh, that'd be fuck, 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 like, fuck, fuck this. Like, they cannot, they, well, at that point they realise it's a what. The funny, the funny thing is, is like, the comic comic book squad from, like, original, you know, oh, we're yeah. growing up. We're 30 Where do you years, run the economy? <laughs> yeah, we run know, this world. How, wh- how old were you when you first picked up a, a, a comic book? Four, probably? Yeah, right, so... Three or four, so we're talking yeah. thirty years. Thirty years. So the the, the people they're gonna spend the money to watch these films because they've been following it for the last twenty six years yeah. are gonna be adults and they're gonna be like why are we G rating this? Exactly. It's the your audit the, it should be like in anything. And once again I'll go back to my pop standard wrestling because it's <laughs> it's been around for so long you can watch the cycle. Yeah. There's a thing called cyclical growth. Right? Yes, and it so. goes like this. That you, you you might start off as a wrestling fan yeah. when you're twelve. Right, and yep. if you like it for six years, by the time you get to eighteen, you're not liking the same thing you liked at twelve. But if you've still got all that audience that you had for this six years, and you grow the product with them, and kind of age it up as they're aging up, imagine the Harry Potter books are a very good example. Yep. Each one of those, you're meant to read them one a year, starting at the age that Harry Potter is in yep. each book. Yep. Right. So in that theory, as you're aging, getting more mentally mature and more and understanding more mental the things, books the should books should be grown. Yeah, yeah, and that's what should be happening. And that's what I think DC seems to be doing is they've th- these guys seem to have realized huh, our audience is adults. So let's stop aiming the, the, the films at their kids. Let's aim it at the adults. Let's make the adult one and go for that market because here's the bottom line. You take you have kids. Yep. Brayden, you have kids, right? If a yep. good film yep. comes out that they like, how many times do you take them to the cinema to see it? Wow. <laughs> Once. Okay. If a good film comes out that you like, how many times would you go to the cinema to see it? Uh, yeah, I'd go twice, three times. So where's yeah. the money coming You're from? Right. Is it coming from the yeah, kids? From the or is it coming from the adults? Or is the, did, did the Dark Knight make that much money because people took their families or because people like me went four I, times in a I day? Went, I went four times to watch The Dark Knight yeah. Rises. Rises. Oh, sorry, sorry, The Dark Knight. Sorry, sorry. 
I, I, I banged okay. out for a second. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Heat stroke. You went full rises. It's all I right. went full rises. Um, yeah, I went and saw that in the cinema three, four times. Yeah. Um, and I can still watch that movie every single time and the hairs stand on the back of my neck every single fucking time in, put, in parts of that movie. I was like, oh. Mm-hmm. Every single time. That's good targeting. Yep. In terms of you, you know who who's going to be paying to see this movie? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So anyway, it's going to be a good film. So on the height meter. Oh, sorry, sorry go, go. Uh, Last, lastly. Yeah, yeah. I am so digging Henry Cavill's Superman in yeah. this. Like the yeah, look on his it. face when he's walking down that hall of just pure disgust. I believe it. I was like, holy shit! I can feel, I can feel the heat coming off this guy's face. Yeah. Mm. There's a like, lot of hate going around for that, actually. A lot of people saying he's supposed to be a Boy Scout and he's supposed to be this and he's supposed no, to be that. No, no, no. I'm willing to bet those people's exposure to Superman is Superman 1 and Dick Lester's Superman 2. Yeah. And that they've never actually I'll read agree. a comic book and realised that Superman so, is a Boy Scout until you really fucking push him. Yeah. And then mm. he's Vladimir Putin, pretty much. But yeah, that... <laughs> That look on his face, though, that was just like... That was Red Sun Superman. Holy fuck. Yeah, that was Rusty that was Superman. Red Sun Superman. That was awesome. That's Rusty Superman. So, I'm, I'm... Hype meter, for me? Ten. Yeah. Okay. How was your hype meter at? Do Braden first. Okay, Braden, what's your hype meter at? Uh, about 47. <laughs> out of ten? It's good. It's good rating. Yeah. Six. I've had an erection for about three days now. I'm with you. I'm about a six. I'm, I'm like, all right, really that's enough. Ben Affleck looks amazing. Want to know the truth? Want to know, know the absolute truth? I'm more excited for 2019 when I get to see a solo fucking Batman <laughs> film with that. Because I'm watching yeah. this and I'm like, oh my God, this Batman movie is going to be the first thing I ever see. Because you know Kevin Smith's going to have something to do with it as well. Yeah, he will have asked him questions. That's, that's my business. No, he'll be just ringing up. Just come to set. Just come to... Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I was the bomb in Phantoms. But yeah, I'm, I'm six. Just shut up and show me the fucking movie already. Yeah. I'm kind of done. You've... Yeah. You've rustled my jimmies enough. Give it to you, me. You, you, you've moistened the tip. It's enough. <laughs> it's, it's enough playing about. <laughs> Alright, well, now that's out of the way, let's move on to TV for this week, shall we? Sure. sure. Alright, let's kick things off. Firstly, this week we'll start things and we'll shake things up a bit. And let's talk Supergirl. This is episode 6, Red Face. Anger issues surface for multiple characters, including Kara. Kat's mother, Catherine Grant, arrives, as does Lucy's father, Sam Lane. The military's road combat android, Red Tornado, challenges Kara, and she and Alex eventually defeat both the robot and its creator. But the fight leaves the former weakened. It is discovered that Hank Henshaw was the last to see Jeremiah Danvers alive. At the end of this episode, Kara drops some glass, and when she picks it up, she starts bleeding. All right. Uh, so, what did everybody think of this week's uh, first appearance of Red uh, Red Tornado and all the other shenanigans of Supergirl this week? Is it getting better? Are you two is the man who's not a twelve-year-old girl, <laughs> and the man who has differing opinions and just doesn't like it, but has independent that he's not a twelve-year-old girl. How are you guys feeling? Is the show getting any better yet? The fight. It wasn't too bad. This week, it kind of, it, it wasn't too bad this week. They did spend a lot of time talking about um, emotions or, or a, a single emotion uh, in this case being hate, but that wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Um, they probably spent a little bit too long on that fact. Um, the whole episode seemed to be about controlling hate or anger. Because um, at least the dark side but that was... Um, but but aside from that, I actually didn't mind this episode. I liked um, Red Tornado. Mm-hmm. Uh, liked Red Tornado. I didn't. I wouldn't say I loved Red Tornado. I, Red, would, I don't think uh, that's Red Tornado yet. It's that's, RT Mark One. That's a prototype. Yeah. Although I don't know yeah, how yeah, they're going to make I do hope we get to see him again. We will. I, I'll get to that in a little bit. I have a theory on where Red Tornado goes next. Yeah. I'm glad he wasn't full Crichton, which was good. <laughs> I actually was really surprised because that publicity yeah. shot made him look like shit. He didn't look like shit in the episode. Yeah, yeah. I was, the whole time I was, I was, I was like, 
Wait, I haven't even seen that scene yet, and yeah. he doesn't look like it. He it was a close-up like promo shit. shot, so yeah, that's it was a problem. Because yeah. he, he has different, like, his eyes his are eyes really are different. solid and stuff. Yeah. It was just, that was the, on the set shot. Yeah. 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 So, um, that's why you don't release a trailer without CGI. Gavel. <laughs> Better man. That's the, kind of, that's the kind of gavel response I expect from now on. Okay. When I slow out of gravel, I want to gavel. Now, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, he wasn't as shit as I was expecting him to be. No. Um, uh, so, again, sadly opinionated to slightly differently opinionated to idiot over. Not a twelve year old girl. Not a twelve year old girl. Um, because I don't have a look either. Um, <laughs> you're just jealous. I'm not uh, jealous. I. You're just upset okay. Because I'm gonna say. Could, might have, could make a bright eyed girl's hair blue. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a look. I, I, I yeah, don't. He's got the look. I don't personally. And everything I, still I don't ever do, I do fuck for you. Up for a second. That's Brian Adams. Hey, just a question. Do you, right. go, do you go? Do no, you la 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 la? Shun la 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 la. Um. No, 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 I still no, don't no, like no, Supergirl. No, 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 I don't no, like the TV look. series. But this is probably the the best episode that they've released. So you're saying it's progressing so, to a so, good so place. So it's, it's almost like what I was saying the other week where they're slowly but surely building up a storyline and not, not throwing that good... I don't think I'm going to like it. It still annoys me on a level that... I, yeah, I you just, didn't think you were going to like Ben Affleck as Batman. And we, as we've established this week, <laughs> you're your opinions start off shit and then you see something you're like, oh, I see what everybody else was saying now. I'm back on board. Yeah, okay. but, Quick, but, uh, there's a difference there between up. me I don't, all <laughs> I'm pretending. <laughs> I'm sorry for having my own personal opinion that I don't like something that you guys do. <laughs> that was incredible. That... I'm back. That was mad. I'm back. That was, yeah, that, that son of a I bitch. Out of that pit last week, really. I, did, I still got water in my ear though. It serves you right, you piece of shit. Hey, man. Uh, now, a couple of things I want to talk about from this episode. Um, first of all, really surprised they killed off Doctor T.O. Morrow, considering that he is like an actual golden age villain. That it's almost blew, like it's Doctor Tomorrow. That blew my mind. Almost. 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 That almost. blew my mind. Um, secondly, something I wanted to address from last week. I actually made a, a couple of errors because uh, my memory had gone slightly faulty on me. Get the fuck happens. out. Um, Maxwell Lord isn't necessarily a hero or a villain, but if he went one way or the other, it would be more towards villainy. Uh, he does end up becoming pretty hardcore villainous and ends up dying at Wonder Woman's hands in one of the crises. It's actually what part of the, the OMAC project was all about. Was, neck snappy? Yeah, she breaks his neck. Uh, basically, he sets off a device, and the only way that it can be stopped is by killing him. Because the, the, the same that, that thing with Red Tornado, with my brainwave control, yeah. that is pretty much the same OMAC. thing. And oh, because... Okay. because no, it's not oh, the OMAC. Not, okay. it's just, it's That's why I said it's a separate thing. Still running a leg it from just Pit. It just comes apologize. under the OMAC project comics. Right. Yeah, Mike Cranston, for this week, I also have uh, said Aaron Paul's do all that. Uh, as I said, Hulk Hogan's. Hulk Hogan. My Hulk Hogan's are going to Shaney Briggs <laughs> because, yep. like, she had character growth, she stepped up, but also, you get to the end of this episode and they find that she finds out some shit about her dad that she didn't know, and instead of responding like every other fucking character they've written on Arrow and Flash and having a meltdown, she's just like, <laughs> okay, let's find out more. Yeah. So, Kyla Lee is the name of the actress. I thought I'd just bring that up just in case. Kyla Lee, I can't remember the name of, the, of Clara of Kara's sister. Mm-hmm. Um, Jenny Briggs. So Jenny right. Briggs. So Jenny, Jenny Briggs. What's he come on? Give it to me. Alex. Alex. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And my other one goes to Kara because that girl is Supergirl. Don't give a fuck. That girl is Supergirl. She's doing a wonderful job. Don't give a fuck what. I'm not a 12 year old says don't give a fuck we don't have a problem with it because I'm not 12 just don't have, just have a problem with it but it's not because I'm 12 that's the same I was going to say that you're not 12 no I'm not 12 that's Brayden's line you can't yeah. give me your fridge oh. um, but I don't have a look so <laughs> um, I was going to give my Aaron Paul's mm-hmm. got it right fuck you all you've heard it three times so you should be right uh, to Kara and to Cat Grant okay Character growth. They were the they were the two characters. So are you that coming around on Kara? Are you going to be eating some humble pie in a few weeks on Kara as well? Are you going to be eating Kara's humble pie? He's eating all that pie. Love something but pie. He's becoming. Possibly. He must be cousins with the Rock. <laughs> possibly, but <I'm> not, <laughs> possibly your cousins with the Rock, or possibly eating humble pie. It's very humble possible. Cousins with the Rock. <laughs> yeah. Be eating humble pie on Kara. 
because I can see her becoming Supergirl, and it is that you're right. That scream, amazing, mm. mm-hmm. 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 amazing. Um, Second best scream we saw this week. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that much yeah. later in the night. I'm, I'm, I'm restrained. I'm like, pretty, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking Bang about. Bang girl. I'm okay. a 12 year old girl for a second. I mean, well, you're allowed to be a 12 year old girl. You've never denied being a 12 year old girl. You don't have to look. And I'll, I don't know what other songs they did. I wish I did. I mean, I'm going to take this shit off. Um, okay. Listen, you know, listen to your heart. Uh, should, we, should we move on? Yes. Oh, great. Thanks. Glob this first. How many gloves you give in this episode? Four. Four gloves? I think it was six. I really enjoyed this. Out of five. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you're giving oh, about... I'm getting uh, heat stroke. <laughs> I'm getting heat stroke. Four gloves. Four gloves. So so we we concur. Do you concur? I concur. Excellent. Put yeah. our civil music on and we can have another great <laughs> discussion like we did last week. Yes. Before I drop my fuck up. Yeah. You know, now at the end of the day though, I think why I got confused was it, it must have been love, but that's over now, so I'm not confused. Brayden? There's more than you wanted. Uh, three. Three gloves. Three gloves? So this this episode didn't take you on a joyride. Joyride, join the joy. No, look, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than what I have uh, quite a lot of the others. You know, I've sort of jumped from I don't like this this series to you know I enjoyed this. It was okay. I enjoyed it. Let Free, me ask freeze you, more than half. When you watch Fucking this, intake. when you watch this episode or this show, do you wish you could fly? Do you say I wish I could fly? No. But, uh, but you realise no, you can't, no. so in the end you just go crash, boom, bang. Because it's over now. It's almost it, unreal. It's okay. It, it, I mean, it was almost unreal and dangerous, but you were dressed for success. <laughs> eh? Must have been love. Oh, it must have been. It, 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 he had the look. That's how he's been spending my time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's move on to the next what? episode for this week. Oh, no, of course. You're more rusty lyrics than I do. Jesus Christ. Three and a half gloves. So you were the same as Brad. You and Brad shared the look. A little bit. No, it's my look. All right, let's move on <laughs> to Gotham for this week. All right. <clears throat> I have to set the tone. It's a bit, uh, a bit dark. James, <laughs> James Gordon wakes up in Edward Nickham's house. I'm going to learn that from Oswald Cobblepot that he is now a fugitive from the law for assaulting Theo Gallivan, the pedophile and never returning to the GCPD despite a, do- a documented arrest. Gordon and Colbot begin making plans to break into Theo re- Theo's residence and save Bruce Wayne. After being questioned by Barnes on Gordon's whereabouts, Leslie secretly learns of Gordon's location from Nigma. After finding Gordon, Leslie attempts to persuade him to turn himself over to the police department by informing him that she is pregnant. Such a classic bitch word. Yeah, still so hot. Nigma informs Alfred Bullock and Lucius Fox of Gordon's location. Gordon Bullock, Alfred, Selena, Carl, Cobbpot, and his gang all arrive at Galavan's residence just as the Order of the Saint Dumas is about to kill Bruce. During a clash between the Order and Cobbpot's gang, in which the Order is defeated, Theo, Tabitha, and Silver Slut begin to make their escape. After being bullied by Theo, Tabitha, and Silver escape, but leave Theo behind. Cobbot convinces Gordon that Theo might never be convicted, and the two take Theo to the docks, which we have established been previously. Nothing, Nothing good ever. happens at the docks. No. Ever. Don't yeah. go to the docks. What happens? They Especially in your, if you're in Gotham. Yeah. It just doesn't matter where you no, are. No, just, just docks don't in general. Don't go to the docks. Gordon like right finds an abandoned warehouse. I said go to the Looking for docks. someone looking right. at an abandoned warehouse. Exactly. Yeah. I would rather go to an abandoned warehouse than the docks. Theo oh, to the docks and murders him. Later, Gordon See? finds... Yep. Leslie... <laughs> finds Leslie and proposes to her. Theo's body is discovered by Wayne Enterprises, who takes the corpse to Indian Hill, where Fish Mooney's body is also being kept. The signs state that the Theo's body is to be experimented on by Hugo Strange. I just want to say, right off the bat... Uh, sorry, you missed a scene of this episode... To apologise. The tag at the end? I missed the tag at the end. I did, uh, I've forgotten the tag at the end. Please fill me in. Did you not watch the tag? Oh, the yeah, no, I know the tag at the end. Do you? Yes. What was it? It's a certain doctor. <laughs> played by an ex-bodybuilder. Is that is that the right one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never a doctor, but yes, yes. <laughs> you are thinking of the oh, right Oh, sorry, person. he's a specialist, so he's a mister now. Yeah, exactly. That's right, yeah, we, we had, had this discussion. discussion. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but yes, it was Mr. Freeze and his yeah. freeze cannon. Yes, it was. So it'd be a very young Mr. Freeze, though, wouldn't it? Yes. This would be probably be Mr. Freeze right around the age that she gets McGregor's. Hmm. That everyone seems to get. Well, that's why he's testing out his gun. Maybe he's more evolved. Yeah. He's a freezer safe here. Speaking of frozen things, I just want to take a sidetrack. We'll go up on the screen right now. I found this cereal in the aisles of the supermarket this week, <laughs> and I figured Braden must have a truckload on it. If you would like to help contribute, though, to the Dad Nights Breakfast Cereal Fund, right. price the box of this, send them through to from the back cave, care of 12345 Matt Sykes Drive, uh, Moa <laughs> Shit 5049. Pretty much. <laughs> Brain, what do you think of Gotham this week? Frozen fanboy. I don't know what to think of Gotham. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really done your head in he's, he's from first break. Yeah, right. 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 From he, first he, season. He can't watch it because he's a twelve-year-old girl, so he doesn't understand it. That's true. That's true. This one's this one's pretty I just, good. No, he can't understand I it because well, this I was enjoying it right up till. I mean, I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it, but then it just they got to they killed. Or they had um, Jim killed Galavan, which no, he didn't. I didn't see yeah. coming, and now I was just like, "Oh yeah, yeah, true." Did. Yeah. He's just not actually dead because who goes bringing him back? Yay! Yeah, but in the eyes, in the eyes of the law, he's oh yeah, yeah killed he's gone. Him. Like he's how the fuck can he come back from that? He's come back all the time from you know getting sacked or getting demoted, and he comes back. But now he's flat out. How can he hide this? I don't. I don't know. I, well, just, I don't think I don't... anybody knows he's actually killed this man. I can't even. This man yeah. has just disappeared. Mm-hmm. Because Cobblepot fucked him up. They, 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 down his okay, he's gonna get away. With, no, he's gonna get away with it because Cobblepot shoved the umbrella down his neck, and Cobblepot had a motive to kill him. So they're gonna pin it to Cobblepot, Cobblepot and that um, Cobblepot knocked it because Cobblepot knocked out. The it, captain, he could say, knocked out Jim as well, and therefore they, because there was no one else was, to witness. That was the theory I took away from was that Jim was unconscious. Is that the the, the game plan they got was Penguin's not going to care if he gets blamed for this murder, and Whereas Jim has it's just like, I knocked you out villain. and I took you with me. Yeah, I kidnapped you as well. So there is, it, there's a, there's an old thing in crime or in American law. That I'm sure that this is the the rule they're basing on, but no body. No crime. Mm-hmm. Plausible deniability as well. Because in theory, right, hypothetically, let's say uh, I kill Terry tomorrow, right? And I just, I kill him, I take the body, somehow dispose of the body, the Dexter style, cut the body off, drop it at sea. How can you, you, you go to his house and you find blood on the floor and you find saw marks, right? Now, yeah, he, he's probably dead, cut up with a saw. Who did it? No. Do we have the body? No? Okay, well then, how do we know he's dead? Well, we presume from the blood and whatever. Okay, so you Pretty. DNA tested the blood? Okay. So I think there's enough blood there that he can't be alive if you lose that much blood. Okay, where's the body? We don't know. Well, well then, how do you know that... How do you know who killed him? How do you, we, you don't really have the evidence, mm. per se. So in theory, I think that... That, that is the loophole oh, I can yeah. see, is no body, no crime. So from and, and, no, and no other witnesses to say that Jim was there. Exactly. So it's, a, it's very, it, it's one of those things where you can go, okay, well, it's very clear what has happened here, but... And I think that's why he didn't tell Leslie what happened. He just said, it's over. Yeah, mm. but I think Leslie also joined the dots, considering she said, are you sure this time? And he said, yeah, but it's very much not over. Mm. Because Scalaban's coming back. Yeah. So it's, uh, Must have been love, but it's over now. <sighs> that being said... I am loving Gotham this season. Thank God, yeah. Because if it followed the same pattern as last year, I would have uh, put forth a vote to remove it from our reviewing, to be honest. But, yeah, this, this season has just blown my mind. Every time I, I'm, I'm, I look forward to mm-hmm. Um, yeah. mm-hmm, to the nights where I can watch, I'll be like, yeah, sweet, sorry Emily, you're off the cards tonight, Gotham's on. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you for that, because it's a, it is definitely picking up. I mean, this episode... Each, I, I can picture more moments like there's really like has really good comedy to balance out the days like, there's all this horrific shit going on but then you've got Alfred go, like be like Alfred and Nygma have this conversation he's, and Nygma's like staring at Alfred's like come on spit out Windows if you've got something to say say it and his <laughs> whole comical stumbling like, through the 
mm. on the junkyard and hiding the yeah. fridge and yeah that yeah. was great and the and the car where he's hijacking the house get the out yeah, the car I need and then he gets tased in the face yeah. Yeah. Um, like and the then whole... you've got fucking um, Lucius when they're trying to climb up the stairs and Bullock's like this is too many stairs does the like I'll see you guys there the Ghostbusters <laughs> thing where he's like I'll be there in a minute it shows up just in time like save the day and he's like that's a lot of stairs <laughs> uh, Lucius uh, this is the one where Lucius solved the riddle real quick yeah, Lucy yeah. saw the real, but he was also like, uh, I'm he not, points I, out I'm something not, else. I'm really not a man like of it. combat, but if you wanted to plan. Yeah, he's kind of like, your plan's going to get you killed, so yeah. let me actually work out how to not, like, let yeah. you die. I like how he's, um, <laughs> uh, Enigma's like, hang on, who are you? He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, he's like it's, it, what am I, this, 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 home? He's at somebody's home? Your home? 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 Yes. Home? No, no, no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Who are yes. you? Are you uh, yeah. he, he didn't know what to think. He's, I he's kind of like speaking to my lassie. Home, home, your home. Yes, yes. What? Uh, uh, he's like, oh, crap. <laughs> um, my go-to move of hiding something in a riddle has failed. I don't have anything that else. Just so go good. get him. That was so good. And then like, even like, they, so they saved Bruce at the end. And he's like, <laughs> think of saving me, but I have a perfectly feasible exit plan. Like, sorry, Batman. And, and, and the, the look Selena <laughs> Kyle gave him at the end was just like... Brilliant. Just so bad, man. I love this episode <laughs> so much. It's definitely so. That's it's, just it's a very, it's, This episode of Gotham, not that uh, I do. I do want to bring up, though, that Theo Geller there went to levels even beyond again of oh, Pedro no. in this one. He's, yeah. he's a fucking scumbag. He, I, I'd be surprised if he's not trying to start some kiddie porn. Like, the way he was trying to set up <laughs> Silver. Yep. Like, yeah. holy cow. I know, uh, he, he'd be the, the one bit, videotaping it while his sister's giving end, him a like, blowy. <laughs> The bit at the end where he turns, like where he goes to kill, basically kill Silver. Yeah. And you saw, like, you know, where, and uh, what's her name, Kygris is like, Theo, don't. And he's just properly in the zone of like, you little. Like, yeah. that was crazy. That dude was basically dripping venom at that point. Yeah. That was mental. Hmm. I, like, I really do like this show. I oh, know. The, the guy who plays Theo Galavan does a fantastic job. Like, there's no real, no real denying it whatsoever. No. It's a solid, it's a far superior show than it was last season. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I think with this episode, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to say much. We'll let Brayden have his say in a sec. But with this one, I would pretty much almost say this episode alone, even if you haven't seen the rest, this stands alone as a really good one-off. No, I recommend just watching it. I really mm-hmm. do. I recommend just watching this one. Bray, what do you got to say? Speak on it. No, I think I've pretty well said all I need to say. I um, had very mixed emotions about this sort of towards the end. Like, I didn't really, I didn't know what to think. But, um, yeah, we've covered most of it. It was a really enjoyable episode. Uh, like, there was so much about it, and there were so many characters in it, and the characters really were at their best this episode. Like oh, there was just so many that badass posse that goes walking through the street where they have their like gang of dudes was just mm-hmm. what's that? I'm like, oh, this is this awesome. shit is going yeah, this down. Is, like, Vested up with shotguns and shit. Yeah. That was kick up. It's funny, they're all just marching and then you see Penguin with his little limp just... Yeah, with this weird shuffle thing. That was, <laughs> that was great. I'm waiting for the day that Leslie just looks at Penguin and says, Come here, let me fix your fucking knee. You idiots. <laughs> but yeah. Do you have anything else you say? No, I just... I like... I like how they put little things in the background. Because mm-hmm. when Jim walks, walks away from after shooting... Um, Galavan. Galavan in the head. You see... Penguin in the background walk away with the uh, the umbrella in his hand, and then like that's when I'm like I'm like you know that's how you're supposed to tell a story like just show me snippets the, and let my head do the brutality the, of that though before where Penguin is just beating him and not hitting him in the head oh, hitting yeah. him in the arms and the chest and the ribs bat. I think Theo and said Galavan's begging to get to yeah he kill said him. to Jim kill me yeah kill me now kill me I think he said kill me please yeah yeah I believe he actually said please yeah. Uh, I, I, I honestly, him I death. actually did not think Jim was going to pull. I, I actually thought he was just going to go. Sorry. Yeah, no. I actually, I, can't. I literally saw that part, and when Jim pulled out the gun, I'm like, oh, it's just a threat. I actually jumped back a little bit I when they pulled. Shocked, like, oh, I, shit. I, I actually audibly yelled, "Holy shit!" while I was watching this because I could not yeah, believe yeah. he actually shot him. Yeah. I, I was expecting mm. him to shoot him in the knee or I, something I, like that. I, I actually thought he was going to do the whole like similar to what they did last week, put the gun in Theo's mouth. And actually, then have the crisis thing, and that was the moment where he's going to be like, "I'm not that man," hmm. Hmm. because I can't. I mean, granted, he comes back, so Jim is absolved of it. But hmm. at the same time, I don't see how this man can turn around and yell at Batman for the way Batman polices a city yeah. when Jim is mowing people down. 
Yeah, but, but this we is, have, I think this we is have, the gym that we'll get when Batman's here. We have we have seen that. Uh, oh yeah, forty years can change a man. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this this that, really showed why he needs Batman, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We have seen though so, that Jim is corruptible. It's not so much like that's why Batman yeah. is. I mean, it's, it was never yeah. the fact that Jim was uncorruptible. It's because yeah. he was human. Yeah. Like that's why I like him as a character because yeah. he's the human version of Batman, whereas Batman oh, is a symbol and he's mate, if, if I was in the same situation, I'd put if, him on the dude. If, if Theo was doing that sort of thing to my kids, I would, you know, that trigger would have been pulled the yeah. first day I had the gun at him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like, I would have been like, you know what? Pulled the trigger. I'm, yep, I killed the dude. I'm still not understanding Barnes, though. Mm, I don't think you meant to. I reckon he might be a long term player. Yeah, maybe. I think he might, because you, you were assuming because like, he might get killed off if he's way too good. But we'll have him for a while if he's really evil. I have a feeling he's that middle ground, much like Jim. I, I think, think he might end up being Jim's I think mentor you, I think for when he becomes Jim Fisher. back. I think we're yeah. gonna have. I think we're gonna have a couple episodes of uh, him and Jim mm. sorting out what's going on with Jim. Oh, absolutely, because like, you can tell Barnes is the sort of guy who's he's the dude who's seen some shit, knows how to fix some shit. But like, I think I Jim doesn't have a mentor. He's got Bullock as a mate, but he hasn't got a mentor. Barnes can see. What's happening in him? Mm. He can see it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, that, well, that's why I told him that story about I put yeah. it on the kid's mouth and I pulled the trigger and I've regretted it every day since. Mm. Yeah. I think the big difference here is I don't think Jim's going to regret. Mm. Thomas Caliban. Mm. He also he's he's that, um, in his oh. mind he's the only way to serve justice because that's why he because he goes to do it first of all at the penthouse and he's like no you're right and then he's like wait okay, and then Galavan kind of always teases him with the whole like I got off he's like you're right you did get off. I think yeah, that's like, Galavan's like, no, no, like, no, 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 shit, uh, <laughs> pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I was just talking big or something. It's like, wow, you're you're really digging your own grave here, Galavan. Um, what are you doing? Side note, that dream of Barbara. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something's coming back with that. Yeah, yeah. Barbara, Barbara and Jim will be together again. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's hand out some awards for this one. Start okay. off with our Barbara, shall we? Barbara's. Galavan, Fractal, Will Petoey. I don't. I. I never liked Howie. I don't like Silver. But that's grooming, isn't it? That's. That's a little groomy. It's a little bit Petoey. I just. I wouldn't I say know, grooming. Yeah, I would say it's, it's grooming because I don't oh. think Galavan's using her for his sexual release. He just. Oh, grooming her to do. Yeah. He's grooming her to be. Uh, like to use her sa- to be a, s- a seductress. Yeah, because wasn't there a line saying there's, 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 there's plenty of other women in the in the Galavan family or the Jumar the, in the order that will do this for me? Probably something like that. But I mean, so, I don't think he. I mean, he. T- you know, something happened between him and Tabitha. Or you know, something happened between him and Barbara. But I don't mm-hmm. think anything happened between him and Silver. Yeah, he's meant to be the abusive, alcoholic stepfather in yeah. this situation. He's just. Yeah. That's why when he got when Daddy got mad at the end, oh, yeah. she gets as freaked out as she does. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, I don't think he was meant to be. Like, I get that. I get what the pedo yeah. but I don't. That's not really grooming. Grooming would be more. Uh, we'll get into in in uh, X Men, but there's mm-hmm. some shit that Kevin Bacon's character does in X Men that's more grooming. Groomy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but Theo um, Galavan gets my barber. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, that's still that's still completely deserved. Yeah. Without, like, yeah. Here you got Matt. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say uh, Theo Galavan. Yeah. He was just a scumbag. Um, I'm not going to say Silver because there was a moment where she was like, no, I can't do this. I can't be this person. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so there was a human side of her who was just like, you know, this is wrong. Even, even though as fucked up as my family is and as fucked up as I've been brought, and I, there's not much redemption for people that are in that family situation. Yeah, I'm human. Line, I, I cannot let this happen. So, yeah, has to be Theo. Okay, has to be Theo. Hey, Braden, are you uh, jumping on the Theo train? Are you breaking the? Uh... I am. Um, I am, for those reasons, and I don't think I can think of anybody else to be completely honest with you. Um, most of the characters were at their best in this episode. I really enjoyed it. He's got one in the hole. I do. I can see it. <laughs> My Barbara for this week goes to Leslie Tompkins. Oh, is this the I'm pregnant bitch oh, move? Oh, the, the pee bomb. just the I'm pregnant bitch move. I mean, granted, they, they've been doing a very poor job of hiding that behind the usual Hollywood pregnancy big coats and blood bags. <laughs> um, 
no, it wasn't just that. It's just Leslie is so. Okay, when she and Jim started dating, mm -hmm. she didn't have a problem that he was this way. She's felicitizing him. Mm -hmm. As in, oh, you're still the same man that I fell in love with, but you've changed. How? How is he any different? He's still the exact same dude. Jim hasn't changed. This episode, granted, after what happened in this episode, shh, that's when yeah, that's when changed. he's changed. Yeah. But before that, he's just been Jim Gordon, and she's like, oh, you're always running off to save the fucking city. Yeah, you knew that when you signed up to the deal. That's kind of what Jim's motive is. Yeah. So... You just did. Yeah. She on Harriet. Dead black pan. Moving on. Moving on. Let's hand out some credits. Aaron Paul's for me. Okay. Not Paul Aaron's. No. Not, not Peter Hogan's. No, no Peter Hogan's. Not, not Peter Hogan. No, no, no. Who the fuck is Peter Hogan? Now we got a new one all together. I, I'm pretty sure his <laughs> right, Google, cousin. Let's actually. The only Peter Hogan is showing up. He's a doctor in New South Wales, and from the look of his picture, he's a bold fucking golem looking bloke with glasses. Here's your fucking Peter Hogan. <laughs> there you go, cool. Anyway. Anyway, Aaron Paul's. Paul Hogan's. Paul Hogan's. Timmy's. Goes to Silver. And to Bruce. Mm -hmm. One. Silver, for the same reason I said before, that she was like, you know what, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely believe that she was like trying to get mm -hmm. Bruce out. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second moment for Bruce, when he turned around before Theo was going to kill him, was saying, look, Silver, I love you, and kissed her, and basically tried to get her off the hook. Yeah, get, yeah, get uh, Calibre, even after everything. One. So He's Batman. That, that was he Batman. He is so Batman. What was he... Was was it, this was the one with the line where uh, every lie has a flicker of truth in it, and he, yeah. what he said to Silver was actually talking about Cat. Yeah. yeah, that was that was no, the, said, that was the last episode. That was last week where he because he says something along the lines of oh, I was because he was talking I was to Cat. Telling, yeah. I was telling her the truth. I just wasn't talking about yeah. her. And then he and then Selena's like, oh, I ain't gotta go. See ya. No, I'm just gonna steal this car. Yeah, is that cool? Um, sure, bring it back with the full. But yeah, that, that that you know for that. Yeah. Yeah. That was Batman. I saw Batman in that. It was just like, like you know so what? that bit of the end where he, where he cruises off and he's like I had a, a perfectly, I, fe perfectly feasible, feasible escape, escape plan. plan. Yeah. And just like and yeah. just <laughs> Bruce. Held up and, and, and not, only, not only that the whole scene of him basically accepting that he, there was a good chance that he was going to die. And he was just like you know what? If I die I get to Actually, see my I, parents. I need to go back a little bit and uh, I'm sorry. Throwing a, I do have, I do have two uh, Barbara's to give out. The other one goes to Ron Rifkin, the the guy who played the Order of Saint Dumas, dude mm -hmm. with the knife who wanted to kill Bruce. That guy was, that guy was shit. Fair enough. He was a shit actor. Oh, he was and, actor and, 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 and his jump at the end, like yeah, the jump was what I was like. What, I was just what, like, what happened? Is that supernatural? What? But then he died. And yeah, exactly. Slow, slow moving foot. What? Yeah. <laughs> Who are you giving yours to? James Fran. Theo? Theo, the guy who plays so you're Theo. you're giving him both. I am. Wow. Because God knows that sort of shit's got to come from somewhere. But no, I, I actually like the fact he's able to play that much of a creepy dude. He does well. I think he does well with the character. Even though he turned into Christopher Walken in the last few episodes. Look, it's a thing that happens, Chip. Why? Your life, of course. No. <laughs> Master Bruce. Master Bruce. Nice, no, no coffee, no coffee. Brent, um, who are you giving yours to? <clears throat> yeah, I'm going out with the Aaron Paul's first one to Bruce for, for being Batman. We had a fe perfectly um, feasible escape plan. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, second one to. I've forgotten his fucking name, as if I've forgotten his name. Um, Harvey. Bullock. Bullock. Yep, for the stairs. Just fantastic. <laughs> Just that one line. A lot of stairs. Just that one. Right, That's I'll, a lot of stand. I have a from the back cave first. Oh my god. I have a five way tie. Because I'm Whoa. literally watching the. I've so got a Brady's. I sat down. So got I've got Brady's. I sat down <laughs> with a pen and piece of paper and literally was like, I'm going to sort this out. And I, I got stuck. So I'm like, I cannot, yeah. I cannot budge these five people because literally their performances are all so good mm -hmm. that if you take one out, yeah. the episode falls Ooh. apart. Okay, so starting with number one. Well, so we'll go in reverse order from. From like pivotalness to to maximum awardage. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So first one, mm -hmm. Lucius Fox. Mm -hmm. Guy who plays Lucius Fox is incredible. Incredible. And I, I, the only one who, when I watch this, I'm actually like, oh yeah, I can see how this becomes Batman Begins. Mm -hmm. I can see this. Number two, Donald Logue is Harvey Bullock. <laughs> For the exact same reason as Brayden, that staircase gag was the funniest shit. Number three goes to Theo Gallivan. James Fran. James Fran. For an exceptional performance as a villain this whole season so far, and realistic in my opinion, the glue that held season two together. The fourth one goes to my man Al. <laughs> because god damn he was hard as nails yet still uh -huh. British the whole way through that thing mm -hmm. yeah. and his whole sole purpose in each, in each second of that is I'm going to get Master Bruce I've got to save Bruce yep. and the hug he gives him when he finally gets him is like oh thank god I, yeah. Alfred is a dad he yeah. just doesn't want to admit that he's the yeah, dad yeah he's dad and finally Bruce motherfucking Wayne because <laughs> yeah. god damn it that kid is becoming Batman he's amazing he's, actor yep, oh, yep. So yeah, those are my men. Except, has anybody else noticed he's got a slight squint on one eye? Which, in my opinion, unless he wears black eye makeup, it's going to be very obvious who Batman is. Mm. Yeah, but in times like that, there's always something that he's concentrating on. That's true. That's true, I do think. Probably, maybe, it may well be his acting style or not, that he actually has a squint on eye. So. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. So alright, and gloves. Five. It's five. So we got 15 here. What's up, that Mo? How many gloves? 4.75. 4.75. Okay, where's, where's your point two five coming from? Where, what what so was it? Was that, it was that moment when um, Jim killed Theo, and I was just, I just, I didn't know how to feel about it. It got too real for you to turn up the TV. I don't know. I don't know. I. I don't know. I really don't know. I didn't know how to feel about it. I you just still couldn't don't, even. by the sounds of it. Hey? You still don't know how to feel about it, by the sounds of it. No, I still don't know how to feel about it. Just need to listen to your heart. Just... Okay. When it's calling to you. That's a pretty good score rating. over now. That's yeah. actually the best score rating we've given them. And no, had. an episode ever. Yeah, I reckon you're <clears> right. <throat> hey, let's move on to the next one in the chain. And Ooh. it'll be the first of the two-part crossover event of Flaro, starting with The Flash. Right. Flash. Is it there? Episode 8, Legends of Tomorrow. That's the one. Look at Matt, no one is. Legends of Today. Oh yeah, there you go, Matt. can write Legends of Today. Today, Legends of Tomorrow is the TV oh, series. Did I write it on there wrong? No, I read. I just read. You're an idiot. That's fair. He probed. Fuck off. <laughs> so, like, go so get me a drink, you son I'm of a bitch. You're such a clunge biscuit. You really Good day. Yeah. Are you going to fuck off too, Braden? Cool. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it's just you and me. Because these porch rhinos are pissing off. Vandal Savage arrives in Central City looking to kill Priestess Shiara, who turns out to be Kendra. Though she is not aware of it at first, Barry, uh, Barry goes to Star City and enlists the help of Oliver and his team to protect Kendra until they can stop Savage. The team is visited by Malcolm Merlin, who informs them that Savage is an immortal who cannot be stopped. And later, Kendra, Kendra is kidnapped by a winged man, but is rescued by Barry and Oliver, who capture her captor. The man is Carter Hall, who tells them he was Prince Khufu in ancient Egypt and that he, was Ke he and Kendra are soulmates who have been connected for 4,000 years. The pair are destined to die. The, uh, uh, the fuck. The pair are destined to die, be reborn, and find each other I in an, each up. lifetime. Fuck you, Adam. Carter also reveals that Vandal has killed them at least 206, uh, killed them the last 206 lifetimes, each time growing stronger. Vandal locates the staff of Horus, a weapon capable of killing Carter and Kendra in Central City. After Kendra unlocks her abilities or emerges. The team decides to regroup in Central City to take down Vandal for good. However, Oliver encounters a family of a mother and son from his past by chance, which may put their mission in jeopardy. Meanwhile, 
Caitlin Harrison and Harrison create a serum that will increase Barry's speed temporarily so that he can defeat Zoom. Whenever you guys are ready, because I, I can't really talk to myself all night. Uh, my synopsis is uh, very vague, so I might try and fill it out, just wing it a bit. But uh, Oliver and Barry take Kendra Saunders and Carter Hill to a remote location to Sister keep them hidden jokes. from Vandal Savage while, that, while they figure out how to defeat him. Malcolm arranges a meeting with Vandal, Green Arrow and the Flash. That doesn't go as planned. Uh, basically, everybody dies. Barry right. runs back in time, tells right. Oliver. They repeat the whole thing again, but get everybody involved this time. Uh, and unfortunately, Felicity lives. Um, well, there will be consequences to rewriting that timeline. I'll get into those yeah. in a minute because I know what the I, I I've cracked this code too many times to not know what the writing is. Keep a hold of the gavel for later. The gavel's coming, man. Thank you, thank you for being there with me, man. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> not quite gavel uh, Oliver Oliver confronts gavel his ex girlfriend about the child and starts to get to know his son, but condition is he's not allowed to tell anybody. How come Connor's named William? Don't know. Don't. Doesn't make sense. I guess. Okay. I I have a couple of theories on that. Mm -hmm. I brought it up in the hopes that one of you might actually work the theory out, but okay. clearly it's on me to have to answer my own questions where I'm trying to make you guys look smarter. I should know. Yeah, maybe his middle name's Connor. Um, Last name the, Connor? Uh, it's like a the reason ballway. that they haven't named him Connor is because they want you and you and you and everybody else who can't crack codes like me to think that William or the mother is in that grave. But nope. they're not. Felicity is in that grave. Nah, I don't think they're not. doing everything they can to God. distract you from Felicity being in that grave. But then all you have to do is look at this episode where Barry directly says to him, the last time I unwrote history, it's like really bad shit happened. And the only thing that's really unwritten in history is that Oliver and Felicity, Felicity break up. That's the big event that got broken. Mm-hmm. So, considering history always and the fact that they always comes back big time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and considering Vandal Savage now knows who to attack and is not dead, mm -hmm. he's dead but not. So yeah, let's let's I guess let's start. Off. I let's thought it was going to happen earlier, to be honest. When when Barry was catching all the knives and the knives were going out, and Felicity was in the room, I was like, yeah, that's, why you call it, yeah, that's why the shot lingered on her. They know this, the the producers are not dumb enough to not know who we as an audience who we as an audience want to see to die and who they as an audience like as in the, the shippers don't want. So they're playing up both sides at once. Mm. But it's very clear who's dying, and who's in that grave, and why. Mm. Um, it's going to be Vandal, and the reason for that is. And I was actually doing some thinking about this because I I, I mean I still think that the the schedule's been fucked up because I don't understand why the season break is taking place at episode nine. When it's a 24 app season. Because um, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Okay, yeah, so things have thrown out. But what I'm saying is from the actual flow of a show, it should be breaking yeah. at 12. Yeah. So in theory, whoever's in that grave, that's what should, we should be finding out at episode 12. Mm. Okay? And then I did some more thinking. Right. I don't think whoever's going in that grave is going in this week because we've seen previews of Legends of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oliver Queen is there and he's not looking sad. Mm -hmm. He's looking just green arrow and normal. Now, if somebody's just died, I doubt he's turned out to be all like, let me give you a pep talk on this building top, folks. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. whoever is dying is dying after Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, but in saying that, he isn't going to show up in Legends of Tomorrow right at the start, will he? It'll be somewhere towards the middle of the end. Green Arrow? Oh. No, that'll uh, be close to no, the end. No, that'll be the, like, let, we need to get a team together. The, to okay. take down Vandal Savage. And I mean, to get the team together is going to be, uh, well, we need two people to get a team together. Okay. Oliver Man, and Barry. Just to jump ahead. <laughs> you know how we watched X-Men First Class and there was that montage with that mm, bo, bo, mm, gong, bo, 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 music as they walk around and all like, the most people you wait, I know what you You have a I'm really so bad excited. habit of like, not good with foreshadowing, Terry. No. Settle down. Wait till we get to I'm the third act. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they go out the, 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 the younger sirs, the age regressed sirs, are going around, <laughs> the lords, as it were, are going around and, uh, and bringing in people. Bringing in people. That's what is going to happen. It's going to be like, well, because uh, what's this? Uh, Rip Hunt is not Rip Hunter. Yeah, yeah, Rip Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. Rip Hunter's going to come in and be all like, yeah, well, well, that's Vandal Savage, isn't it? So you won't <laughs> get in and we won't fucking kill him, mate. So, and then, so and then sure, it's going to be like, we need to bring a team together, and then Ollie and Flash are going to be all like, yeah, let's do that. Hey, Barry! Vandal Savage, eh? 
In yeah, it. Hey, fuck. In Tom's it. Gotta come fuck. Oh, in it. Up, come on. Suit right, up, line. Barry. Get in the corridor, Barry. <laughs> I just realised. Can you imagine if this was set in Cockney, England? With Green Arrow as a Cockney pom, and Barry is like a Londoner. You, you need to get out of my city now. I need it. Master Barry. Master <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Why the water was to see you running fast in France, Master Barry. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I gotta move my slow foot, Barry. <laughs> Just wait, you take velocity six, Barry. It was me, Bazza. It was me all along. Then Ezra Miller shows up with the actual flash, that'll make you cry. So, yeah. Um, oh, Jesus. This two-parter was was very good. It's very clear this. I, I get now mm. why these two parts are called the the Legends of Whatever because th this is the precursor to Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand I why start. Malcolm fought uh, fought Randall to only bring him back to life. Don't knew. I don't get. I don't that. get that. Either. And I also want the answer to the question: Does the fact that he is now back means that the roles are reversed so now Kendra and Hawkman are uh, Carter are immortal the, I don't think no, I think that is savage they no. don't know what happens now because they've yeah, never they've been, been that's yeah. what I mean so, so they're also like, um I, well, the answer damn it well you'd assume though it would work the other way as well if he gets stronger every time yeah, he gets no, the but I don't think so because if you Remember when we watched whichever one was the, the flower? Um, mm -hmm. You saw Vandal sucking the life force out of Kendra as she was dying. Yeah, that was the that was Legends of that was the yeah, that was the Arrow episode. Yeah. That was the Arrow episode was, where they were in the fight. It's yeah. the Arrow one. Mm. Yeah. So um, they didn't Just do that. Just before rewrite history. Oh, God, they didn't do that. Right. So yeah, I don't think so. I think he was sucking on their life force, and if they're immortal, like, if they're technically... Yeah. Here's, a, okay, but here's, here's an even bigger follow-up question. Malcolm Merlin has been Ra's al Ghul for, what, eight months? Hmm. How does he know all these people, Consider I know that the magician existed before that, but he's acting like he's always been, been Ra's. Or Ra's, or whatever you want to call it. It's the same way that... Uh, well, maybe there's a three-month study with the you have to take before you take the same way that uh, Savage... Yeah, but Vandal knows him. Uh, no, it's, <clears> the, it's the same way Damien Dark knows that Malcolm Merlin's rage. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. Oh, for, for me, it would make... Uh, for, yeah. For me, it would make sense for Vandal Savage to have a, a huge wealth of knowledge because he's so old. So I wouldn't be surprised if he actually you had... actually want to know science? I want to know some fun science fact? If you were to be able to live forever... Mm you would actually go crazy because the human know. brain only has a certain... It's like a hard drive, basically. So it goes like a certain limit. And and, but also it gets bad sectors and you can't necessarily overwrite certain things. Uh, yeah. Basically, if you live forever, you would start like a... The idea that Vandal Savage is, has been around for 3,000 years, right? in theory, he should your memory should only go... You, you might be able to remember a couple of hundred years. Okay. Right? And then you would start overriding memories or deleting space or forgetting mm. things or mm -hmm. whatever. So, um, you know, it, it just comes down to the fact of, well, it, it's just science. I know we're talking comics mm, here, but through right. sheer science, it just is hilarious because, yeah, the, the guy, the, if you were to be immortal, you would actually go crazy. Mm -hmm. you, would, you, you would go so crazy, you would try to kill yourself, which you can't do because you're immortal, because you became immortal. I just, I just want to mm. pick up on... pretty fucked up. I just want to pick on something, something here. Like, you're talking about, like... The, the logistics of living forever. I was talking about the logistics of bursting a water mains and Supergirl the other week, and you had a go at me for it. And the whole water fight. Yeah, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going, this episode, fuck crap, because this guy can remember 3,000 years. He should be thrown in the turn. I'm never watching this shit. I'm not fucking yeah. 12, and I don't like fucking Flaro. I didn't Rock's say that. Hat. What I said was, <laughs> what I said was, what a funny side, Terry. Mm. Here's some science for you. I just dropped some knowledge. I didn't mm. come in and drop my knowledge and be like, that's why this show is shit. I was just saying, here's some fun knowledge, Mrs. Bollocks. So, Vandal well, Savage. So case. free, but like that in, next time. But you hate Supergirl, so your your opinion is invalid. Hit Terry. my Vivaldi. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, Vandal Savage, I mean, I've only seen the cartoons, but uh, when we were introduced to him in Justice League ooh, Doom, mm -hmm. He actually goes back to his backstory. Um, he like he was primitive man. Meteor fell from the sky. He crowded it. Said it changed his physiology and changes the way his brain works. Have you ever come across him in a comic book? 
Yeah. Is that somewhat accurate? Just give me a yes, no. We're not going into this. Just yes, no. It's getting... It's, it's still warm. 98% yes. Okay. Cool. That's all I need. That's all hey. I need. <laughs> Asterix. Asterix. <laughs> okay. We'll get to that later. When we come to Legends of... I'll tell you what, when we get into Legends of Tomorrow... We'll have a chat. We'll, I will do an actual DC directory on Band of Savage. Excellent. Fantastic. Dust that one off. <laughs> Yeah, it's been, it's, a it's been a while. It's been a while, but I'll, I'll bring it back. Cool. Just for Band of Savage. Like a porch runner. It's cool, we'll bring it back. Hmm. So, yeah. Uh, I, I I liked this season's crossover because of what I've been saying. I liked the fact that Flash became the Arrow and Arrow became the Flash. Yeah, that was very... It was fun. But it makes it so weirdly obvious how much the Arrow universe doesn't make sense with jokes. Mm. Mm -hmm. it's just like Batman it's so weird to see jokes yeah and, but I, I love the fact Ollie doesn't actually get jokes I love, I, 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 I love the whole yeah. point where they're facing you got Ollie and Diggle mm -hmm. and uh, Barry facing um, Vandal yeah mm. And Barry's cracking all these jokes, and Ollie, Ollie is just straight face staring at the Ollie, 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 where, Oh, you mean where uh, Barry uh, runs to the warehouse to meet Merlin and oh, yeah. Ollie? For the first time. Yeah, for the first time. Oh, did you practice that monologue, or is this all off yeah. the cuff? Yeah, and like, Barry's he laughing looks, and looks, looks at everyone, yeah. everyone's just like. He looks dead at those guys, and he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> what I love then well, when he runs back away, he doesn't do any of that <laughs> shit, he's just so like. Spooked. Fuck. What is he called as well? Ghosting. When he ghosting. sees it, yeah, he calls it ghosting. Ghosting, yeah. Which is uh, actually, well, I mean, two terms. It's the, race, the car race term, because you see the, yep. the ghost, but also, um, you know, it used to be, you don't get as much now, but in the old, the old school analog TVs, mm. with the bunny mm. ears and whatnot, mm -hmm. you would actually get a problem where if, um, if the signal wasn't pulling out enough or if the signal was getting overloaded, mm. you would actually get this problem where the image would it's slightly shift. shift. Oh, yeah. okay. And so you would get this kind of Out halo outline, outline to one yeah. side, and it oh, looks okay. like a ghost. It, looks, it's oh, cool. it was called ghosting because it looked like Yep. Literally, whoever was standing there had a ghostly figure oh, standing, right standing just, cool. just off the side. No, I, I, cool. I thoroughly enjoy it. I do enjoy these crossovers because it always... For me, it always seems like Barry's the one going through the more shit. Like, he's got more weight on his shoulders, especially with running from that explosion, which was basically ripped from Paradox. He, he's always the one that seems, has to make the decision or pay the price. Yeah. So that's why I like Barry more. I, I, uh, did, I did like the... Thing with Oliver there that he was like run Barry mm. yeah like, run just run we're, we're fucked yeah run. you can make it yeah. mm. mm -hmm. I uh a couple of a couple of things I saw this week that made me laugh one was that some guy put up a Facebook post of uh the people have been screen capturing Felicity getting burned and labelling it Felicity smoked <laughs> this guy's like I've been tagged 21 times in the past 24 hours on this picture. Thank you. Um, that made me laugh really hard. Uh, the other thing that I found like as, as somebody studying crime and all those things that I found fucking mm. hilarious someone in Central City made an action figure of Captain Cold mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was awesome yeah yeah, yeah. that's like people like well here's your Charles Manson figure <laughs> here's your Zodiac figure yep here's Batman just go nuts go nuts yeah I, I like uh, I was watching this episode and I was like literally just about to type to you oh my god is that Captain Cold and then he said I'm like brilliant <laughs> done and I'm done. Yeah. No, I really like, um, I'm liking the new dynamic. Since we're going to get rid of Felicity, there has to be another relationship for Oliver to cling to. And if you watch about a lot of us, Oliver has his relationship just to cling to his humanity. Now he's going to have William, Connor, whatever the last name is, or last his name Connor. Son, um, or, his son, okay. uh, oh, his son, oh, that's right, his book. son, his, yeah, you're right, his son is what's going to be what, what grounds him to reality. Mm -hmm. But his son right. is also going to have a speak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I like Thea's little quip because we had a conversation about this where they rocked up to the farm farmhouse and you thought it was a Superman reference but yeah, I, go, I go it was, the, say what the joke was it was uh, they got out of the car at the farmhouse and Thea automatically just pipes out wow some superheroes are hanging out at a farmhouse it's not was it welcome to the new normal something I've like seen, that I've, no, no sorry I've seen, I've seen this, on, this TV. on TV or a movie somewhere I, I thought, thought it, was it was a Superman joke yeah I thought it was an Avengers joke I think it? it's an Avengers joke. An yeah. Avengers one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I took it as small bill yeah, because mm. what is the Superman trope? Really think about the su somebody's in danger, what am I going to do with them? Yeah, but as soon as you said Superman, I'm like, oh yeah, cool. That's what I'm asking these two. What are they gonna... Answer yeah, that question that for sense. me. Where do you t if you are Superman, where do you take somebody if they're in danger? Hmm. Yeah. 
came, uh, was it? Was uh, it yeah, Forge of Solitude, Solitude, or you take him home. So you take him to Smallville. Yeah. <clears throat> you ever read a comic? Not, not really. Okay. Yeah, not really. Superman comic. It happens if you go back and watch the, the films too. Mm-hmm. He, he takes Lois to the Fortress of Solitude. That's right. Everybody else gets taken to Smallville. To my three kids. Kids. And I thought it was the Smallville joke because, oh, a bunch of superheroes hanging out in a barn. I've seen this somewhere before. Yeah, in every Small. Superman and yeah. yeah. every episode of Smallville yeah. because everything is planned. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, but I was, Terry's I was, I was, Avengers one I was, also makes sense because before, of all guys' barn. Yeah, that's, yeah. What I was, that's what I saw. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. So to me, it was you're like, not wrong. It's, it, that's a very <laughs> clever joke. Very clever joke. I'd love to know which one it was, just so we can yeah. settle the argument. But yeah, but I enjoy yeah. how they're actually starting to spread out the the jokes as well. I think uh, Daniel Panabaker had one this week as well. I don't remember what it was for the life of me, but she had one. I'm pretty sure. But they're starting to spread out the jokes, like you know, Cisco always had the movie references, like. Was it Indiana Jones this week? That was the yeah. That was, the that was great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, like, I like his one. um. Yeah. I like the I like the dialogue between him and Thea, mm. Um, mm. where he's talking about maybe changing her name, and he's like, "Oh, just ask me." You know, I come up with all the good names, mm-hmm. and she's yeah. like, "Oh, maybe well, when you get a haircut, I'll listen to you." <laughs> he's like, like, "You're just jealous." My man conditioning game skills. Is strong. Yeah, that's right. The man conditioning <laughs> skills, and he just plays. He toughs it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just like fucking hippie. <laughs> Yeah, um, I. The only thing missing from this episode for me was Carter and Ollie just don't interact with each other. And that mm. made me really mad yeah. because Hawkman and Green Arrow mm. are fucking. The th- perfection! That is the relationship that is great! Because they're kind of like, uh, is it Green Lantern and Barry? They have a really good con- a relationship, don't they, in the comics? That, well, they have a good relationship. It's just that one is an extreme liberal, one is an extreme Republican. Is the best way to look at yeah. it. And so Ollie is extremely no. Everybody should be mm. free and equal and all that. Whereas Carter comes from an ancient Egyptian mm. logic, which is no, you have you have, have hierarchy. Yeah, you, you have a yeah. lot, you know people standing in possession and yeah. whatever. And that's yeah. so they're they're constantly arguing at that, but they're always constantly trying to kick the shit out of each other. Like like the the Marvel trope, as I've joked about, is. Hawkeye quits. Yeah. That's the Avengers Marvel joke. The JLA, like, outside of the main core JLA, is yeah. that these two will kick the shit out of each other. <laughs> for no, like, they will get into fight. Like, okay, the best way I can do it, and I, I really hope the editor cuts this in here. Remember the episode of The Simpsons, the softball episode? Yeah. yeah. There's the bar scene, and that dude is Lord Palmerston! Yeah. Hip T. Elder! And, like, they get to that fight. That. It's Ollie and Hawkman. Oh. Personified. Inversely, <laughs> Chicken Man and Peter Griffin. Yep. That's what that's what it is. It's just yeah. the, although no, because Peter and Peter and the chicken just fight without a conversation first. These two always build up where they'll be calm and one of them will say something. Wasn't it, wasn't it over like, over like food to yeah, start fly? It, it, it was over. It was over a fly. fly. He didn't want a flyer, he just yeah. kept beating the shit out of the chicken. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, that, that's what that's what their relationship is, and so um, I know they're going to lead towards that eventually. Yeah. But I just I was sitting there, I'm like, oh, you missed you missed a prime opportunity to set the seeds a little yeah. bit there. You might you might get it in uh, Legends of Tomorrow. You might. Nah, you'll get it in the later half hour. Yeah, true. Because oh, the Hulk, Hulk man is is an Arrow character, I think, not yeah. a Flash character. Yeah, he's not really happy. Whereas Hulk Girl seems to be more Flash and. They were both whatever. They were both on the same show. Okay. They just you don't reckon they'll it. balance them between the two? Like they'll. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's my argument to that. Okay. Looking at it from a strictly logistical and logical standpoint, mm-hmm. what does Arrow's CGI budget go to? Yeah, it's what does Flash's go to? It goes to Firestorm, <laughs> Barry, yeah. Grodd, yeah. Uh, Captain Cold, yeah. Portals. Portals. Whereas you don't, on Arrow, you don't really have a CGI budget unless mm. fucking Damien's doing some magic. So you can afford mm. to have the CGI of dudes flying. Yeah, 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 that's right. So bring something different. Yeah, no, you're right, right, yeah. Oh, Plus, she has, or, or conversely, they're going to get their own show because she did, I mean, I know the Legends Tomorrow thing is what she was indicating where I'm going to go away and mm-hmm. be a hero somewhere else, but they may also be trying to spin off cool. another one too, I don't know. So essentially we're going to get a small screen version of the JLA. But, uh, I think we're going to get a also, small screen also version of the, the Crisis. Yep. We're going to get a Crisis, it's just going to be... Uh, yeah, I think I brought this up last week, but like I said, the, from what I gather, the, the, the execs are saying TV can have access to more comic cool. book stuff because Beautiful. it's fucking selling. <laughs> well, it's selling, but they're also smart enough to realise you can have 
two mark like you know both markets Movie going market at the same time the people are going to pay for both and they're not going like this they're, finally fans are starting to get credit for not being like backwards and retarded because they used to treat us like you can't if you have a movie and a TV series they're gonna get so confused people are yeah. dumb because they're not gonna be able to differentiate between yeah, exactly. the two exactly but I think now they're able to join the adults and go well no you probably could you probably could put some guy as Batman and people aren't gonna be all like but that's not Ben Affleck I'm so confused let's hand out some awards now you get two so you can hand out double Aaron Paul, Paul Hogan's, or Peter Paul Allen, Chad Peter Paul and Mary, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, the Wu Tang Clan, <laughs> the Carpenters, two um, packs, the Family, Brought White Family, League of Nations. Yeah, two packs of <laughs> two Aaron packs Paul. of going to hand out some Rock's cousins. <laughs> Ow! Sorry, that was my fault. Um, oh God, going Barbara's first, of course. I want to go Felicity, but it's just too obvious. <laughs> so does Ollie. <laughs> I want to go Thea. I know you do. I know you do, Every, Reggie every Ray. I know <laughs> you do. <laughs> I'm so glad I give you the opportunity to dust off some classics like that. Um, <laughs> Bringing it back. <laughs> Barbara's actually kind of tricky. Yeah, I'm good. She, she is. She's a weird character. Yeah. No, I've got no Barbara's. I do. Baby Isn't Mama. It? Baby mama gets to Barbara. Hmm. Who? Uh, she didn't. She didn't. She didn't catch the million dollars. So why did she keep the kid from him? Because Riddler. Because children are worth more than money. You're a parent. You'd know. No, no. But that's what you're saying. Why? If she didn't catch the she money. Catch why the did money. She, she had no reason. Why she, did she keep the kid. She from left. The logic. Moira the logic she used was the fact that Oliver. Put it this way. That Oliver that we saw before he went to the island wasn't exactly a good role model. That is Neither was she. And she said, no, she actually said, like, to Oliver, look at yourself how you were before you went to the island, and she knows you're, you're a different man. Person's father. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, well, let me put it this way. Uh, before I had a child, I wasn't a good role model either. How about you, Matt? He's not one now. Were you, a, were you a good role model Who before you had a child? <laughs> So you're good actually, role yes, I was because my first two children I've actually adopted. So, fuck you. Okay. Yeah. She had the kid for like three months before he died on an island. Mhm. Yeah. Because she she just she just got a bit of spooge in her, and felt like did the pregnancy test was like, oh no I missed my period it's been like a Marvel Menzi, so that's <laughs> that's four weeks, so she's a month pregnant, right? Then she gets a check cut by her and more is all like why don't you fuck off? Slut? Gives then her two the weeks check. Later. Gives her the check. Ollie hits a boat. Two weeks later, he's gone. Like, I, I'm hypothetically, even if the kid is born before Ollie gets on that boat, he's not. He, she doesn't even get a year. So you got to think. New mother just had the kid, frazzled up from the drugs and the fact this kid won't shut the fuck up. The winchy little bastard. So why is she going to introduce him to Ollie? Then Ollie goes in a shipwreck. So of course, what what do you want her to do? Actually, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna drop a hot take because I got two Barbaras. Okay. Uh, you're all gonna get upset. Because maybe that's the level he upset you, but, but the second one will make you mad. <laughs> You've said that before, and I've The first okay. one goes to Vandal Savage, because uh, in terms of a villain, he seemed really cool, and then he died super easy. Mm-hmm. Which for, like, the dude who is, like, second Immortal. to Dark Seed, it's pretty shit. Yep. The second one goes to Hawk Girl, because that character was booty. Yeah, she's not great. Her buck teeth are horrible. Her acting is shit. Everything about that character mm-hmm. is just weak yeah. sauce. Yeah. And considering that fucking Carter is like living on scenery, Frank Gorton style, it's a mm. very, yeah. very, very big difference between the two. Mm hmm. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't know if anybody else gets this. I feel like, for instance, uh, Grant Gustin and, and like pretty much the main characters and Carter now included as well none of these people feel like they're acting they feel like the characters have come to life the chick who plays Kendra feels to There's me like a sucking fish she, well, no she feels like somebody acting like I'm trying to remember my, my lines and make sure that I say them out in the and order they're written put the, the right cadence into them and, and, yeah, and she's not she didn't do it horribly she's not doing it that, those are my two for Flash mhm 
Now my arrow ones, once again, Vandal Savage is his counter max, it's still his death. Mm-hmm. The arrow one goes to Cisco. Because Cisco wow. was not funny, was not clever, was not smart enough to foresee any problems that he would normally see on Arrow. Mm-hmm. His shitty pep talk to Kendra, Kendra was crap. And his whole, like, pining, like, oh, well, I guess I'm not getting the girl. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. He, a Shut bit, up and be a like hero. A bit of a wounded cat. You fucking 12-year-old girl, you what brain not. Yeah, a bit of a wounded <laughs> cat. Yeah, I'll, like, jump onto that. That's my second. Don't, those are me, those me barbers. Let's talk crannies. Crannies? Who you got for crannies? Uh, so Who's look, getting your cranny apple? <laughs> How many? We got two? Your cranny smith. Two, two, two crannies? Cranny you, you've got, we can have a cranny use, you can have two crannies, or you can have four Aaron Pauls. A Paul Allen's. Is that, is that, is that Hogan's? <laughs> um, I'm going to go John Barrowman, because he's fantastic. I absolutely fucking adore Even that man. Even the scumbag move at the end, where he's like, killed my friend, but I'll bring him back in my pit that's fucked, or something, probably. Yep, because, yep. yep. See, I don't See, find him intimidating I like think, anymore. I like to think what he wears around his neck is just essence of vandal. What were you saying? <laughs> I, don't, I don't find him Sprit, intimidating Sprit. anymore. I like him, but I just don't find him intimidating as Ra's al Ghul. No, yeah, he's a no, guy. no. He's, he's he's a very softer Ra's al Ghul. But I think that's because he's not yeah. Oliver's enemy. Yeah. Once he becomes yeah, like it's... Oliver's enemy again, or eventually, yeah. he'll be great. I love Mason Barrett. Like he is, he is my Eric Allen Kramer. What Eric Allen Kramer is to you, John Barrowman is to me. That's a big call. That's a very well, big we'll, call. We will see if you still feel that way in 20 years. Because my love for the cray cray has never, never gone away way. Because <laughs> it must have been love. Yeah, I'm never going to give it up. And it's not over. <laughs> never going to give it up. Uh, never let you down. Let, let down. Not that you want it. Never going to run around. We're deserting. Got a cray? Big cray? Possibly a name, Oliver. Because he actually listened to Barry. Barry, was Barry, Barry. Barry was like, you know what, it's not going to work. And I need your head in the game. Yeah, but he, he sort of did and he didn't. Because he didn't listen. To, he listened in timeline and, too, but then he didn't listen about but don't fuck up this shit with Blizzard. Also telling him to run. Mm-hmm. So that was a bit of a, like, we fucked up. I don't want you to die. Just get the fuck out of here. I'm trying to work out at what so point. Was, will there ever be a point where we get to the fight, final season of... Arrow and Flash, last episode. Flash for the last two years. And and so, but out. yeah, but at the same time, will there be a point where at least one of the main characters or a character will have told Barry to run? So yeah. so far, everyone's told him to run. Yeah. Um. Well, but in fairness, that's that his is the that is the, the trope of Flash. That, that is. That's kind of like being um, like telling Batman to get a gadget out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his utility. You got something in your, your utility belt, surely. I'm pretty sure um, Batman has told every character that he's Batman. <laughs> like, that's the logic you're using here. But you're Batman. Um, yeah, because um, Batman. But also, uh, shit, I had it. Um, the moment at the end when he was like, yep, you know what, I will do anything to have a relationship with my son. Mm-hmm. That was good parenting. Good dad. Good dad, mm-hmm. Ali. Mm-hmm. Mm. He's, he's aiming for John Williams. Probably would have done that. Probably would have done that's that three years beforehand if he actually had been told. No, he wouldn't have. Yeah, he would have. Because three seasons ago, he just got off the island. That is true. Three seasons ago, he was cut, trying to cut Slade Wilson's head off. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and, 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 Slade, and, Slade, and, Slade, and Slade Wilson was going after the person that he, held, actually, he loved the really, most. That's because a really if good he, point. If she'd have told him about this kid years ago, Slade would have killed the kid. Yeah. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time for the main event of the evening. The moment you've all been waiting for. Something we might actually not yell at each other about. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, it, we are talking this week about <laughs> X Men First Class. All right, now, guys, this. This movie. There are just so many things. <laughs> Aside from that, there are so many things to say about it. Now, uh, I'm going I'm to roll back. I'm going to let you guys say some things first, and then I'm going to throw in with, with my parts and jump in off what you guys have to say. But I do just want to let the listeners at home and the viewers at home know that uh, that Honey Badge and I watched this together, and uh, we are actually prepared to record an audio commentary over it if anybody <laughs> wants that to happen in the future as well. Um, just let us know. But uh, if anything you want, if you would like to hear, if you actually would like to hear audio commentaries of us 
or even our films, let us know, because I'm sure we can arrange that quite easily. Mm. But in the meantime, um, Terry and I watched this together, so there will probably be lots of nuggets coming out of this where we'll be like, remember when you asked me about... Yeah, <laughs> and I'll be like, Duh, yes, I did. I did, in fact, ask that question. What is the answer, Adam? <laughs> that's but how it'll go. That is, that's how, <clears throat> when I think about you in my head when you're not around, that's pretty much how you sound. You know what's really funny? I didn't give you a second thought once I'm in the studio. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's all right. I won't be giving you contract a second thought for next year. <laughs> I didn't sign up for a year. I'm moving up to the main roster think. later. Because <laughs> you know yeah, what? Yeah, the main roster. Because I'm The Rock's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's... Send, him to, send him to the cat copter. <laughs> no, you know, you know how you, how you set when your badger gets old and you have to send it out to the farm with all the other badgers? So that for, it can... for a lead uh, dance with lead poison? Or? That's no, horrible. No, Why no, would you... Like, that's animal... Cr- you, that's, you, you're mean. He goes to live on the farm with that uncle. And you, I mean, you can't even go visit the farm because it's a special farm and only, yeah. only badgers are allowed. Right? Yeah, it's a badger farm. But it's a, it's a badger farm. It's a colony. Frolic can run forever and you never get old. Hmm. <laughs> Lord of the Rings? <laughs> okay, when you're a parent and you have a dog, I just, this is the joke. This is the joke. This is Matt. No, I, I was talking about uh, uh, 9/11. <laughs> well, That's 9/11. I was, I was more going to the point of of Frodo like going to that elven city to live out the rest of his life. Yeah. Thing. Which I, it's fine. I haven't read Lord of the Rings. I'm not that much of a nerd. I, I, I have my limits, mate. Like, uh, I don't know about you, but I have... I, I did actually... I've seen women's breasts. I didn't have to read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> actually, I actually got to, Dude. like... I got to put the nipple in my mouth. Three children! It was great. Three children. I have seen boob. That doesn't mean yeah. anything. Yeah, mate. Like, Tom Cruise is two. And that was just a I don't think he's shot. seen boobs. Yeah, but he's an idiot. And he has a tweet yeah? exactly in the middle What's of his a, mouth. Hang on. Hey, did Matt just say, did Matt just use an excuse as to why he's not something that they're an idiot? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> Damn it, I got to serve, I would have served the silk cap. Anyway, Brayden, do you want to kick us off with your thoughts, hey, feeling concerns? <laughs> So on first class. Yeah, look, there was one part that there was, there was a very, very um, yeah, strong actor, I think, in this. Um, I think her name's Jennifer Lawrence or something. But she was really good. Yeah. Ian McKellen. Oh. Honestly, every, I, I think yeah, we I think we should probably kick this off with the um, the Jennifer Lawrence hate train, probably because I think just every time you've seen her life. face, every every expression was just garbage. Every. Every line that came out of her mouth. Was what? Anything else besides how bad Jennifer Ernst was? I don't. Honestly, this movie. The plot wasn't. Look, I. <laughs> Jesus. I'm on the fence with it. There were so many bad things think. in terms of, like, Jennifer Lawrence and just. Um, even, even, well, most of the good guys were just crap. Um. But it didn't really seem to much happen until the end. I felt He's it was boring. Yell that tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to talk to the gimp. Because uh, I think just, uh, three people in this cave really, really love this film. <laughs> Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to get just yelled felt at. It was flat. I didn't really. I don't know. I just didn't feel it much at all. Um. In before, yeah, just Brayden a, gets my Barbara. Just, just a quick question. Did you watch this in your mind knowing that this was set in the same era as 66 Batman and realising it was a comedy? Or did you watch this thinking this was an action film like X-Men 2? Because yeah, this I is thought a, this was supposed to be an action film. Uh, no, this is a comedy film. This has action to it and is an X-Men film, but it's, it's a 60s comedy. period piece that's making fun of the 60s and it's in the same way that yeah. technically Days of Future Past is a, is a 70s period piece, it's just not the comedy one. This one is, this one, whilst I, yes it, it is 
Okay, Mission Impossible is an action film with comedy in it. This is a comedy film with action yeah. in it. So it's kind of... It's a comedy. It's a light version of Lethal this Weapon. Is a, this is supposed to be a comedy. <clears throat> yeah. Um, look at the... Look, okay, all right. When you look at it, like, look look at the spin on it and how campy it is. When I say, when I say comedy, it's campy. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's, it's I just didn't think it was style. supposed to be. No, it is. It's very intentional. It, this this film is is directed by the same guy. He just come off directing Kick Ass. It's got the same oh, okay. style as Kick Ass, where it's Kick because Kick Ass is a comedy. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's I just it's, it's hyper violent and it's insane, but, but it's, it's a comedy. comedy. In the same way, Deadpool is a <laughs> comedy. Yeah. That universe. That's what you're looking okay. at here. It's that style of thing. So these characters, whilst they're maybe not self-aware, it's having a lot of fun with the fact that, for instance, I would go so far as to say in an X-Men, because X-Men 3 is basically just deleted. It's, it's ignored from the minute it's made, right? That's, yeah. that's fucking gone. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So X-Men Origins doesn't relate to this, so that's taken out of the equation. So all we have to worry about is what's happened in X-Men 1 and 2, because technically this is a prequel to them. Okay. It's also mm -hmm. exploring the relationship between Eric and Xavier. Charles, uh, Charles, Charles Xavier. Xavier. Now, it starts off heavy, obviously, because like it's, it's still heavy, and it's got the, the Nazi themes or whatnot, which obviously aren't comical, because mm -hmm. it's still grounded in reality. It's just, Ant-Man! It's Ant-Man! You know, Ant-Man isn't a comedy, but it's a comedy. Yeah. Like, it's fundamentally a comedy. That's the same thing yeah. here. You still... Yeah, I don't know. I so, can still see Ant-Man... As 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 a comedy though, whereas this I I didn't see it as a comedy. Okay, I, well the, the way the, that's what I can sort of understand and see where you're coming from, but I don't know. I just didn't feel it's, like well, it was. Well, the, the comedy is in the comedy. moments of basically everybody in this film is set at the the peak of the sexual revolution, and everybody in this if if okay pulling it back to to what its camp <laughs> core is, everybody in this film is bisexual and just realizing it. That is what this film is. Okay. And Charles Rush. Xavier and uh, yeah. Eric Langshear are literally soulmates who have just found each other. This is their this mm -hmm. is their love story, as it were. They're not they're never going to be brave enough to actually make them gay and lovers, which is fine. I have no issue with that. But let's be real. Mm. They're very so much, Ian yeah. and Sir Patrick are, are playing that. That is that is a relationship that is more than friendship. That's soulmates, yeah. and that's the same thing these two are doing yeah. here. But you've got shit where they're like inviting, like they're lying on the bed together, and they're TV you know they're making all these these campy little jokes to one another. It's a comedy. Mm. It's just framed very well with a lot of like heaviness to it, but it mm. is a comedy. Yeah, it's written very comically, I should I say. And so that's why the heaviness means that much more. Like the part Whenever where. It goes. Yeah, we're, we're, well, as we get to the coin or, um, you know, uh, oh. like the, the, the things that the CIA in the interrogation room and stuff, it gets, it gets heavier real. and it gets real, but that's why it feels so real because they it's gone from this light-hearted romp into punching you in the face. Because mm. look at Wolverine. Mm -hmm. In every other film, Wolverine is... Get away from me. So in this one here, he's the comedy. <laughs> Two words. Mm -hmm. So... So anyway, you guys get into it, and I guess as we talk about it, I'll, I'll see if I can help you explore it, but I think that's what the three of us are seeing, and we all watching it, because I, I laughed so fucking hard during this movie at so many moments, because there's just so <laughs> much just hilarious shit that happens in this film, and they're all just so like, I say, throughout the whole thing, so it's just, it's brilliant. Anyway. Anyway, I'm looking forward now. I like the fact that you have the counterpoint because I want to see if by the end of what we're all saying, if you go, ah, it's a very different film than I thought, or if you're still like, nah, this this was a shit film, which mm. is fine. If you, I'm not going to argue with you if you think that on this one. This one I will give you a free pass on. Mm. If we get to Days of Future Past and you say it, I'm fucking kicking your ass. I think we all are. We're forming a well-ordered line. A posse. A posse. Where I limp down the straight. Matt, you want to give us some uh, info? How you feel about the movie? I love this movie. It's 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 my favorite. It's my favorite X Men movie at the moment that we've seen, or overall from the from the oh, back cave or IRM. Um. All right, second favorite. Okay, that's okay. what I thought. Yeah, I thought yeah, you were gonna I say that too. 
Okay, that's where I was getting confused. I'm like, mm. that one's like 11 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I'd, I'd, I'd probably have to give this a 10 out of 10. Mm. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get mm. there. But anyway. Mm. No, I'd... I'd, I'd All I'd, right, I'd, well, I'd, let's... Let's, let's, well, let's, I, I guess, I'll, I'll do my job and do the host thing and get you guys to oh, start I can, with. I can go let's go from people. the start. It, this thing starts off with a bang with fucking pedo bacon oh, room in a kid. Bang, straight out of the ballpark, go. There is something really disturbing about Kevin Bacon, that he can look that way and pull off that look and do it well. It scares me. There is another movie that I've seen him do that. Sleepers? Sleepers? Oh, sorry. Okay, there's two other movies. <laughs> the Woodsman? No, no, no. There's a three. Other... There's another movie. Um... It's not Hollow Man, is it? He freaked me out in Hollow Man. It is Hollow Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His face. Like, when you do get to see him, mm-hmm. he is true creepy. And I mm-hmm. love Kevin Bacon for his acting I, uh, he, he... I, I have a Kevin Bacon Bacon's story to tell. And it kind of makes me a little bit ashamed because, God damn it, I've been watching wrestling since I was eight. Kevin fucking Bacon worked me. <laughs> I watched Sleepers when I was 12 and for four years because his performance was so good as the pedophile sadistic piece of shit I legitimately couldn't watch anything with Kevin Bacon in it because looking at him made me so sick fucking angry he like, said I, I, as I said to Terry as I'm watching this I watched Wild Things fast forwarding through his scenes right and so literally oh. I didn't understand that movie and I'm like I, I clearly cannot watch this without having to watch these Kevin Bacon scenes but I'm too fucking traumatised I cannot do it he's a yeah. he is one of my favourite he's incredible villain characters uh, villain actors he's Great definitely a hero he's, as well though Footloose yeah but I think he's more suited Footloose I, I think he's more suited to the villainous sort of look as he's got older he, a, absolutely absolutely he pulls off the villains even so it's something well. stupid like R.I.P.D yeah it's he just pulls off the creepy bad guy vibe he's probably the nicest guy in the world but he just he can pull off the creepy and I think he is the type of actor that he's sort of digs on that and he goes hey you want a villain played I'll play that villain because there are no rules to playing villains there were some great moments in, in this villain moments like showing you what a villain is like they, the whole scene starts off shot from this one angle oh, yes. and it's yeah. getting really until and he's trying to totes like make mm-hmm. it, give me a pal so I'll give you some chocolate like just mm-hmm. having a conversation yeah. and mm-hmm. then when he says oh, okay bring bring in the mother he rings the, rings and the, the bell and the camera changes to the other side you see that what we've the wall that we've been shooting through, the fourth yeah. wall that we've been, you know, yeah, watching through, through, is a torture chamber with like all fucking bone saws yeah. and rusty implements and operating tables yeah. and just behind a glass wall, and it's just yep. so. It's right intense. there, and he has no problem. Um, and and just the, the readiness that it, of him shooting the mother is just like yeah. three. Boom. Yep. And we get to uh, we get to something we alluded to earlier, which was the scream of the night. I think you you yep. asked talking about. The kid that yells in this, I didn't realise what he was yelling until he yells for a good 30 seconds, and it wasn't until the literal last last second where he lets out the iron that I realised he was yelling no. Mm. He yells no that entire time, and I just thought it was like a rage scream, like the Supergirl yeah, iron. Yeah, yeah. like, I'm literally like, holy mm. shit. Mm. And I, where I'm, getting, crushes the, I'm getting like... Where he crushes the yeah. helmets on those guards' heads. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was... This film is fucking intense. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why... Just, that's why I can see the comedy work so well because it breaks these moments and it makes these moments that much more traumatic because yeah. everything else is so light-hearted. I can yeah. feel the hair standing on yeah. the back of my neck yep. thinking Brains about... Just see, look at him, he's seething. It's the thinking what? about... Why just, so angry? Just thinking about that scene. Just that, that start I'm scene. I'm not seeing... I'm just... Yes? Jeez, he's died. You wish no, to speak? No, you can do, were you talking about me, Steven? Yeah, yeah. You seem upset. You just sit there. Or oh, he's just no, like, I'm he's just, just so I'm uninterested. Just, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get it. I just, I don't get it. I'm thinking about this movie and I'm thinking, I'm like all those dark parts that you're talking about. And I know you're saying it's comedy and the dark parts make them so much more darker. Yeah. But I just, I don't see a lot of the, co- the comedic stuff that I guess is supposed to be comedic as comedic. Like, for example, I, that, know, I didn't. I, when it comes to yeah, the okay, comedic okay. stuff, right? It's largely the montage yep. where. Um, uh, they go around uh, picking up the yeah, uh, oh, yeah, the strip club. Yeah, McAvoy and even, uh, even Fastbender. Fastbender. Yeah, I just had an Adam moment. 
um, go through like that's a good couple of minutes of comedy because they're mucking around <clears throat> they're like on the bed and they're sort of dressed in suits and they're lying together this far away yeah. and even like even okay, Olivia, that, the beer scene was that what you going to go with? I was, yeah or the, the bar scene where he's going like throwing cheesy lines at, at, at oh the he girls. was picking up that chicks pick, and stuff and yeah. then he comes to the, the chick um, Moira Moira and she's like does that work on everyone? and exactly. he's like Usually, usually, usually. usually. <laughs> well, well, like, like the, the the comedy I see, for instance, Eric goes into the bar with those two Germans, and he's having oh. the beer, and he's like, a German oh. beer, and they're like, ha, oh, yes, only the finest and whatnot, and he's like, yeah, sits down, he's like, oh, my mother and whatnot, he's like, she had it taken away by pig farmers and by tailors, and he's saying it with this very like upbeat drunk thing, and it's not until the moment where he, you know the night comes out, he's like, bang, 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 yeah. maybe actually comes in, but that whole moment, like, when they're sitting there having the tents, like. None yeah. of them are prepared to put the beer down, so they're just all choking on beer. It's still comedic. It's, I mean, granted, that's not a laugh comedy. out loud moment, but that is still a dark comedy moment. Yeah. That's a, that is a uh, I just, lock, I stock, and two yeah. smoke barrel snatch it. moment. Yeah. I just don't don't see it. And what, was, what was the part? We cracked up so hard at something. Oh, it wasn't Jesus. just the Wolverine bit. It was one of the later moments with... Yeah. The Wolverine bit cracked me up. I laughed out loud at that. At what? Wolverine. Yeah, well, besides That's the Wolverine, the Wolverine, Wolverine one is the biggest joke in the film. Um, There's, wasn't yeah. there a moment with Hank and yeah. Charles Xavier? Oh, that's enough, Charles. Don't speak. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I trust Hank. you completely. Hank, Hank don't Hank speak. speak. <laughs> <laughs> so it's those little things. It's, it's like the training montage. Well, like, like, where, um, like first time Alex uses his powers and like, they're fucking up that room and all that sort of shit. There's Hank like, there's comedy the to it, but then there's, yeah. there's the, the, the realness comes back in when, you know, Charles is like, oh, I'm very disappointed in you all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, it's still got a lot of light heart. Like, they rip apart that room, and they're just kids being kids, and that's the point. It's light heart until you that see, war comes in, and then that's when, that and that's when they... they, they you got to look at this film as coming of age. They're children until the government makes them war machines, and, and then, that's when it becomes yeah. ultra-fucking-hardcore, and Charles takes a bullet to the back and all this other shit. But up until then, it is, it's very comedic on purpose. In the same way, yeah. Ant-Man yeah, is I, very I, comedic I up like until I have your daughter. Like or, um... Uh, when Kevin Bacon p- says, here, adapt to this, and the dude's just like, oh, yeah. Darwin, I'm just like... But that got, I'm, I'm like, okay, can you, uh, you know, something you brought up Darwin, and uh, it's hurt my chest, automatically my chest has started hurting, it's one of the first, the first of many times. I appreciate that, I appreciate the fact you have my theme music ready to go, because it's, it's true, I, this, this, this part of the film hurt, this guy hurt me, <laughs> hurt me a lot. Ah, oh, my nipples, they hurt! I heard when Kevin Bacon twist them, and this is <laughs> this is what has happened. With okay, everybody is like 16, 17. Magneto is like what, thirty-five? I'll yeah. give him thirty. At sixty-six, 30? it was uh, well, no, 60, 66, no, sorry, it's, it's, it's sixty-one. At sixty-one, war ended in forty-five. He looked about seven to eight. I it was so 55. no, no, fifty is the end of the war. Fifty was in the, in the war. So it was about eight. Was the start. Oh, 45 so was the start. I reckon that's 47. So, so we'll go, go about 20? 20, 22 to 25, I reckon, because he was only about 8 to 10. He wasn't that old. He looked quite ain't lanky. Because the guy they okay. got... Okay. Yeah. So, so say, 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 say 30. Hmm. And Charles is maybe 25. Yeah. And Raven's meant to be 16. So everybody... Every, theory, everybody <laughs> else is below that age. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Except for the fact that Darwin looks like he's 50. He, he, he looks... He's an old I boy. Don't, I don't... The only reason... I'm literally as I'm watching this... I always forget this guy's in the film. Because he's so inconsequential. And the only reason he's there is to be the older guy who shows them all... Like the big brother shows you how to be a hero. Yep. Because his only, his only purpose is to die like a hero. As in like... That, that, that last moment where he's like... Hmm. Yep. Matt should know exactly where he's from. You to become a, become a villain or see yourself die the hero. Yeah. Matt should know where he's from. 2008. Twilight. <laughs> don't like you very much. <laughs> it's fair, I don't like myself. Hey, you gotta, you gotta be fair to him. He was very distracted by, uh, by Max Lord. At the time, he was like, that Max Lord, he's a sexy beast. <laughs> anyway, back to this film. So, so uh, I, I think the basic plot line of this film follows two things. One... Uh, and, and, and the reason for this, and Braden, this is where I think you get, and I might answer your question as to why this film feels weird to you. This film is two different movies 
put together. Because when X-Men Origins Wolverine came out, while they were working on post on that, they started working on a film called X-Men Origins Magneto. And the story was meant to be the Magneto hunts this dude down. And it was going to be a kind of espionage, almost Bond-like film. I guess uh, Winter Soldier. It was going to be that style of film where Magneto hunts this dude down. And then there was also going to be X-Men First Class, which was about Xavier yes, building his first class of X-Men. So you were going to have a very dark film and a very light, light film course. that would come out the same year and would kind of be like two sides nice. of a coin. Yeah. Like double side of an hour. Yeah. Right? But then X-Men Origin Wolverines came out and as we all watched last time, fucking sucked. And so they went, oh shit, well we can't do another Origins. That mm. franchise has been wrecked. But this film and this story is too good. Okay, let's meld them. And so that's why you get Eric... Eric is kind of with this team, but not with the team mm. because his storyline is still from his movie and their storyline, which was the light-hearted, fun one, which was still meant to have Fassbender in it, just in that montage. All that it, all that was meant to happen was that montage, basically, mm. was them getting the team together and he's like, right, I'm fucking off because I found Kevin Bacon. Yeah. But even still, it, it, it worked. worked. Mm. This movie worked. I was, there's not one point where it's I... It's just enjoyable. There's, there's, there's so... Fassbender. Yep. Every time I see him on the screen, I'm like, holy fuck. Yep. I love that dude. Like, that, that bar scene. I want him to and be I was like, I would love him to be again? Michael Fassbender. It, it, Magneto. Oh, right. Uh, every scene. Uh, even, even right at the end on the beach, mm. when he's... Oh. I mean, okay. That whole scene with him on the beach. Mm. The beach scene's fantastic. The, the beach scene is great. Fuck but me. But if I'm not mistaken, you're in that beach scene, I saw you rubbing your nipples. Yeah. Really? It's, yeah. It's and I did look, I'll preface this with this for Cherry because I can see he's in pain. It wasn't because he hated the scene, there was just something that just, got to him. And it was very cool. It lowered the movie, but it was something that he noticed. Oh, so right. I just, I just, I just, I just, ah! I just, oh, my nipples, they hurt! You know, we've hurt gone through them. 52 episodes of this. That's right, a whole year. Happy year. You no, know, it's been a good year, but we've noticed a trend with certain people that can't hold their accents. Now, Michael Fassbender oh, does a beautiful job no. with the German, with the French. His English accent is fantastic until he puts on a helmet. <laughs> yeah, the, okay, hit a gavel as well. Prepare to have the gavel. Because you're going to need that again in a sec because Terry cracked a code <laughs> in this film that made me laugh even harder and realise how campy it actually is. <laughs> okay. Every time the helmet goes on, the act, he becomes an Irishman. Tiddly T, I'm Magneto. I was. <laughs> it's, it's. Get so stupid. He really does. I'm gonna have to go back and go watch, back watch really, it, guys. He really does. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You wait for him just to order a pint of Guinness and have some potatoes at this point He's in time. He's literally on that beach basically being like, you can be a mutant to proud. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like Liam Neeson in A Million Ways to Die in the West. <laughs> <laughs> he does. It's ridiculous. It's just. Yep, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you can't unhear it. I can't, I can't. Raven, come with me. Just, just, ah! Oh, Raven, come with me. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm Steve. Damn across it. At the end. We're on the winning side, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> he's like that, but no, he's like, we're on the winning side. Do you want to get some potatoes? Potatoes? There's some potatoes in you. We'll make a pot. Well, and more than we're here. a friend's voice. Come on. <laughs> come on, kids, in the come with you. Don't ruin this scene for me. Just I'm did. Sorry, favorite. man. It's every That's time he's favorite. the CIA where he comes in. What happened to Charles? Well, he's left a gap in my life, really. <laughs> Damn it! So, so yeah, it was. Uh, it's one of those he, things. But he did. He, <laughs> he he took a few years worked on it and perfected it by the next one. But yeah, we as we're sitting there, literally, you're not meant to like. I, that was the one fuck up that I was like, I don't think that was meant to happen. I get the feeling they shot that shit first before he found his voice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you just hear it. You just like. And it's only when... So literally, we're sitting there, we're laughing at, like, the idea that the Dream. reason he's... No, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Yeah. The reason he sounds like he does in the future film <laughs> <laughs> is because fucking Charles is in his head so much. He's got... The reason Sir Ian and Sir Patrick sounds similar is because <laughs> Sir Patrick has infected Sir Ian's head with his own voice, <laughs> and so now they are, in fact, talking as the same person. But before that happens, he puts the helmet on. Oh, diddly dear, thank God Charles is out of me bloody head. <laughs> That's what I think happens. 
Damn it. Oh, it's, uh, so I was just going to say, I love that whole beat scene. So yeah. basically, what, uh, it doesn't ruin the scene. You just sit there, you're just like, oh, man. Mike, what, what you doing happens, um, <laughs> that's, that, that struggle with when the, the nukes come off. Yeah, it's great. Oh, well, not the nukes, but all the missiles. He's pushing all the missiles and stuff back, and and, and that huge struggle with trying to stop him from doing it, and Xavier, it's just... And Michael Ironside telling everyone that it was a pleasure service. Oh, and then poor man Sean Connery talking to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that is, that scene sticks to me out of oh, the yeah. whole movie. It's just like, I felt every second of that. Mm. And then when he... And then when he tried to pass the blame onto the um, Moira. On, onto Moira for shooting him, oh Moira, you shot Charles. <laughs> <laughs> you silly bitch! I'm going to have to kill you now. Fuck you! With your chain. Damn it, With Terry, your you're ruining it for me. <laughs> Get off my bitch! <laughs> who's, who's coming with me then? Eh? Hey, beast! You want to come along? <laughs> I was being serious about your face, you bastard. <laughs> um, all right, let's, let's let's go through the what, what do you what do you guys think of the X Men first classes in the first class of X Men? So we've got uh, we've got Havoc, yep. who is uh, Scott Summers' father. Mm-hmm. We have uh, Angel, Angel for a little while. Angel for about two weeks. We have uh, Havoc. Mm-hmm. We have Banshee, mm-hmm. and we have Beast. Beast. Mm-hmm. I actually like him. I, I like the fact that they, who isn't Mystique. Uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get get there in a minute because I know you give, um, give yourself a little bit of time before ripping your nipples open. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the first class. It sets up a nice little uh, precursor for Scott Summers. Yep. Uh, we get to see Beast because apparently he doesn't age. He ages at the same rate as uh, Mystique because. For Scott Summers to be about 25, Beast would have to be at that similar side, probably about 50 or 60 at that point in time. Huh? Scott you know Summers how is about seven. Exactly. Hasn't Scott already been born? By no, then? I don't think so. Because he's in. He's one of the. Well, these guys. That, well, that's the he's thing. That was the very like, What? Come again? These first class of X Men are all kids, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, Scott Summers is short. No, but what I'm saying is Scott Summers' father is the guy that can shoot the shit out of his chest, right? Mm. Who's already yeah, in yeah. prison, meaning yeah. that he's probably 18, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just saying that I, I and plus when you see Chuck, when Charles puts Cerebro on and starts seeing people, he sees a kid playing catch wearing very dark glasses, mm. which logically seeing as he's only seen mutants... Should be Scott Summers. So what I'm saying is, I think Scott is between five and maybe four to seven years. So probably the kid knocked up a knocked up a fifteen year old. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, he does. He does see Norm in that same vision as well, and she'd be a true. similar age. Yeah, and both Scott, and Scott and Scott mm. and Storm are, old, are older than yeah, like, the, the next batch that we see. That is true. But what I'm saying is, I, I think that basically. He's a he's a one night stand baby, so he's probably got put up for adoption or whatever mm. else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that theoretically the numbers do work out. Okay, cool. And because yeah. Be- Beast is by the time what we're seeing, by the time mm. we got say X Men three, I know that, that now it's retcon from history. Yes. But theoretically, by the time we see that Beast, he's about like forty five. Oh yeah, yeah that makes, that makes sense. About right sense, yeah. Um, but no, because like, he's, he's yeah. only just like he's only just eighteen in this. Because mm, by true. the time we get to Days of Future Past, right, which is yeah. about like ten years, theoretically ten years later, mm-hmm. he's only just hit his twenties. Like that's 25. true. And he did graduate no, in that he could have been about sixteen because he did yeah, graduate. Well, exactly graduate everything earlier and that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. So but I mean anyway. Angel I didn't really care much for. I mean, we know Archangel, like uh, was it the Senators or was that two or three? That's three. Oh that's Red Con that doesn't exist then. Um, He'll probably be back in Apocalypse, though. Yeah, he's one of the four horsemen, isn't he? <laughs> um, Let's not go down one of those rabbit holes. It's <laughs> been a long night. That's, it's been a very um, long night. <laughs> um, but no, I like the first class. I mean, I think Banshee's fun. I think he's one of the most underused mutants. See, I, I, I agree with you. I think Banshee's an underused mutant. The actor who plays him is shit. Mm, I don't think they did too. Like, he's not... He's not, he's not, he's not horrid. Shit. He just he doesn't <coughs> open his mouth when he speaks. Yeah, but then and again, that to me it's <coughs> like, bro, you're a character whose entire shit relies on opening your mouth. Yeah, open your mouth and make sound. Yeah, mm. don't fucking talk like, oh man, oh man, I don't want to be here making this movie. And yeah, paid like fucking half a million dollars. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's one Trade of those places, things. motherfucker. So, um, but no, I think Banshee's very underutilized. Um, yeah. I would have liked to see Darwin a bit more, but unfortunately he was there essentially to get killed. Darwin um, was fucking useless. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, I mean, it was a decent first class. Decent well, that's the thing. I mean, for the first class, they're going to be shit, aren't they? It was I mean, aside, we've got, you've got Beast. Beast, realistically, is all, all that matters in this yeah. one. Um, quite a tragic story for Beast as well, turning himself yep. into what he is, but at the same time... Kind of need to. He's yeah, good. He's much better that way. Um, all right, well, let, let's get into it. You had you had a bit of nipple pain going in this. And it started, a it's a double jointed one, but we'll go with the first part first. Can we go with a real easy, simple one? That I'm going to start. I, I have, I have a double jointed, and I have a single one, which which annoys me because I actually enjoy this actor. So this was the left nipple. Ah, oh, my nipples! They hurt. They hurt when I twist yeah. them. Look, there was a movie that came out a, a while ago, and I think it's one of your favourites, just for popcorn pleasure. Really, is I believe it's Charlie Sheen's best film. It is. Uh, Three Musketeers. We all remember that, yes, Brad. Mm-hmm. Kiefer Sutherland as well, in fact. Uh, yeah, I, I know of Martin Trey Marcy but I haven't seen this movie. And, uh, and please do yourself a favour. You've done yourself an injustice not seeing it. Yeah, please watch you it. You watched Batman and Robin, where Chris O'Donnell looked 150 and was shit. Watch Three Musketeers, where he actually looks like a teenager and isn't. Yeah. 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 He's but, not shit in that film. It's his uh-huh. only not shit film. Yeah. Um, so we have Charlie Sheen is amazing. Charlie Sheen's great. <laughs> He's amazing. Because you've got Athos, Pathos, and Aramis. Is that yep. correct? And yep. D'Artagnan is and the D'Artagnan? one that joins them at the end. Yeah. D'Artagnan See, is Chris O'Donnell. Now, Arthos is the big fat one, and Pathos is the one that can't. <laughs> no, sorry, Pathos is the one that keeps eating. Arthos is the yeah. Uh, Arthos is the one that leads the group, and Aramis is the one that can't stop banging shits. That's yeah. the one. So, I enjoy that. I loved all the planet. It oh, was amazing here. Which friend right at home, he was the fat gluttonous one. Yeah. He was just hilarious. He was hilarious. <laughs> Usually forgot how to fight. Yeah. <laughs> he was drunk as well, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. That's why he so, forgot how to fight. So he was in this movie for about uh, 20 minutes. He's a great character as well. He's like the it one that's all fun... like, don't talk to mutants like that. Fuck you. Yeah. And when he, like, when, uh, when, uh, Charles accidentally outs Beast. Yeah, he's like, oh, and no, the, and all of the place like you should have told me. Like his face isn't like shocking. He's like, he was elated. Oh my god, that makes so that's awesome. He was yeah. the best character. Now after that, he gets dropped from the fucking sky unceremoniously, unceremoniously by fucking Azrael. And, and if we can go one one line further, who who is actually cool? Because at least he he side no cool. problem. Yeah. Um, but if we can go one further, oh, we're talking about that one line. In the car park? No, 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 oh, okay. no, no, no. I, I just want to bring up that there's oh, okay. a further injustice done upon Oliver oh, Platt. I did. He doesn't even get a fucking name. Ah, uh, that one, yes. He is credited as Man in Black Suit on IMBD. Which means he's credited in the credits of the film as Man in Black Suit. Mm-hmm. Man in Black Suit. Mm-hmm. I'd mm-hmm. be pissed if I was that man. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's the thing. It's, it's in annoying. Black suit. It's annoying. It's it's one of those things where you know you get a really decent actor. All right, now before you get into so, nipple two, okay. I'll bring a bit of brevity in. Ah, uh, Reveille. There was now bring it into because we got. Well, I'll make it like this film. Heavy moment, light. Heavy, heavy moment, moment, light. It's it's why we all think it flows. Except for Brain, we all think it flows. So no, it will be a gaseous moment soon though. Um, Hugh Jackman's cameo. Yes. Best joke of the film. Easily. Yeah. First bit of swearing I'll we've agree, seen yep. in one of these films, or first f bomb. <laughs> I think it's his absolutely contract. amazing use of it. Yeah. And, uh, the, like <laughs> normally, I get really, I get really pissed off by America's rule that you can have one f word in a PG thirteen film because mm-hmm. they abuse it. This one is done so cleverly perfectly. and so perfectly. Oh, and mm-hmm. it just, it, it just fits him like. It, and the pause they give him where yeah. he like has his drink. Like he gets through his whole drink. It's great. Yeah, yeah. love it. Yeah. Yep. So uh, that's uh, now. Are, are we? We're of the belief that he may have done that for free. Mm-hmm. What do you guys reckon? He would have done that for did. free. Probably he did. Yeah. He yeah, probably did. I reckon they came to him and went. Oh, We've got on, this on. idea for a joke. It will take you half a day. You're just gonna sit there, smoke a cigar, and, and tell these guys to go fuck themselves. I, I like because that that is the biggest laugh in the film for me. Yeah, I can imagine Hugh Jackman getting that call and laughing and just being like, yeah. "See you Monday." Done. I'll yeah. throw the sideburns in now. Yeah, I don't think he's even credited in the. In he's the... not. He wasn't credited because it would have ruined the surprise for anybody that went to see the film. Mm. 
So your headliners would have been Fastbender, be McAvoy, and Lance Lawrence. Yeah. Your headliners on the poster would have been McAvoy, Fastbender, maybe Bacon, and Lawrence. Yes. So if he's not credited, it probably means that he didn't get paid. He may have, no, no, but he'll be a not credited. Can you? you can get paid and not credited if it's on a certain I've, amount. It's, it's, oh, it okay. relates to dates. Okay, I, I thought if you were paid in the film, it was huh. their right, That's or they had to. Print. Okay. okay. No. I, and even if that was the case, Jack would, would have generally gone, no, 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 no. I don't no. think he got paid. Or, no. like, conversely, they may have just said, look, we'll give you 1% of the royalties. Yeah. Some shit like that. Yeah. But fuck. Perfect Brilliant. into that character. And it was done perfectly. It, was and it ties it so perfectly. well to the next film. Like, yeah. that's why it's so good, because the next one where they use the F-bomb is even better, because the guy it comes out of yeah. is the last person you expect. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's spoilers for the next year. Um, so. Or if you're watching this next year, that's just spoilers for later. Um, <laughs> now, did, has, did, your, has your right nipple stopped bleeding yet today? No, no, so... Okay, well, let's, let, let's talk about it. Hit, hit the sound, mate. Hit, hit the, the sound. sound. Hit again. Now, look. You're not wrong when you want to do something. <laughs> but you can't be wrong when you want to do something, Terry. Let's, no, no, let's no, not just, put that out ah, in the world. But Ah, oh, my nipples, they hurt! They hurt when I twist them! When you want to do something like you want to use... Uh, uh, a human well, could, to play. Could I, could I perhaps interject here? Yeah. Are you going to go on to say perhaps something along the lines of there's a Hollywood starlet and she gets one big role and it, it, ca- it catches fire and uh, and then they get used everywhere and their mm. face has to be seen everywhere because they're, oh, look, at the, we've got this person and aren't they the sexy mm-hmm. machines? Oh, so, so much with the sexies. Mm. Is that what you were going to talk about? That's, that's where we're going with. Okay. I thought it might have been. When you take on a role, it's such a mistake. Now, I, Did you say I, with such mystique? Such as mystique. Oh, I thought you said when you take on a role with such mystique and I was going to say that was smooth, but sadly I'm smoother than you. <laughs> You're the smoother <laughs> criminal. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> now I'm a fan of the, co- uh, the cartoon series. You're a fan of the comic books. Now, I'm a fan of all of them, man. Mystique, Raven, whatever. When she was in these things, I remember her being largely blue. a mutant for me. A blue. She was happy to be do, blue. Now, do, do you know why? Because she was. Because she was actually uh, all, uh, mutant and proud. Yeah, yeah. So in this, she, she, it seemed as if she was more happy being a Felicity-type character, which is a pouty fucking blonde who wanted a guy who didn't want her. Pretty much. Pretty much. So... They probably just went... wanted Jennifer Lawrence's face in it because they're like, Oh, Jennifer Lawrence! I preempted you a jail order. What did you say? They put it. They put her in because of her face. That's why they cast her in the film. Yeah. Literally because that oh, night. she'd been yeah. cast in the Hunger Games, and it was like, wow. Well, mm. we're all under the same parent company, so we probably get her for cheaper and sign her to this. But also, she's going to be a big deal because we put her in the Hunger Games. Mm. <laughs> so why twilight? would you, as a creative team, I get why, but why? Would you not try and stay close to the source material? Like I can, I can get being a 50-50 split where we see Raven as Mystique, like the blue form, and then Raven as as Raven, the 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 blonde form. I could understand that, but ninety percent. I don't even blue should be your base. Blue should be your base. It's I don't, especially in the academy. Why she's in the academy and mutant and proud, she wants to fit in. Just go blue, just. Relax, go I don't feel she even has been. She did nothing. Mm. That's not true. She had sex with Magneto, even though thirty seconds before he didn't want to have sex with her because she was too young. And then she, but then morphed. she turned blue, and he was like, "Well, I guess blue counter acts young. Can but you not rape a blue bitch? There is, was he like Captain Kirk rules? There is, a, there is the point where we did point out when she aged herself, she turned into Rebecca and remained stainless. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Who played the mystique in the original two? She age, she age progresses herself into what she will look like in X Men One and Two. Yeah, right. so I was quite clever. <laughs> and then Do he wanted actress. so I, I want the real Raven. So she went back another twenty like ten years, and then went blue with red hair, which was long. And then she got nailed. And then the next scene, she got a haircut. So apparently, when you fuck Michael Fassbender, you get. Michael Fassbender is blonde. I'm, that's what I've taken from this film. Yeah. So, he is he's a, he's so you get plowed and a haircut. A blow on a, a blow on a weave, as one would say. Okay. You could say he's the. Uh, 
You could say he's the Captain Kirk of the X Men. Yeah, easy. Oh, it's unquestionably, <laughs> mate. I think this, like I said, this film is about a bunch of bisexuals who are just like fuck party. Yeah, yeah. And there is probably the fan fiction of. Uh, oh, there was. Yeah, there is. Um, now we we are shitting on this film a bit, and I want to say this for a film that we are shitting on so hard, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, like the shit with Kevin Bacon and. Michael Fassbender, where they are going at each other, mm-hmm. is some of the most amazing, amazing stuff I have ever seen. Those two really seem like bitter enemies who have been rivaling for 20 some mm-hmm. odd years. Mm-hmm. That and was just absolutely I, incredible. I do like the scene where um, I think Charles has got everything paused. Yeah, yeah and, and they do have the water coming up to nose. And and the slow coin. Oh, oh, that. Oh, we're talking about. Yeah, that but what, what I really liked about that is every any other time Charles freezes time, people actually freeze. Yeah. But you can see Kevin Bacon's character he's is actually shaking, shaking. because he's yeah. fighting, and you can see his, he, his eyes don't move, but the pupils slightly dilate. Yeah. It's shit like that where it's like, mm. wow, this guy is really powerful. Yeah, but mm. that coin going through his head slow. I was just like, it's probably the worst death I've ever seen. Oh, though. yeah, that is. That, fucking that's her brutal voice, but so deserved mm. yeah. like you sit there and you cheer for Magneto and yeah, like, yeah. you oh, can see you why do, he would have got but, to the end of X-Men Origins Magneto and been like yes but like it, as much as he deserved it you're sitting there going that's, well, Ch- that's Charles is feeling dark. it the whole time Charles is mm. screaming because he's feeling it the entire yeah. time that's uh, what, I, what I'm amazed by this is the most inverted villain ever because normally we've talked about how we have a shitty main villain and he's surrounded by good ones. Yeah. This dude is just like great main villain backed up by a posse of shit. Yeah. Because he's got yeah. Farrah Fawcett, John Travolta's 70s hair tornado dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's got fucking red leisure suit Nightcrawler. Who is Nightcrawler's yeah. dad? Yeah, I get that. But still, what a shit posse. Yeah. And then he's like, I have the angel chick oh. who doesn't have a wing anymore. Fuck yeah. It. Shit work. I just had to look at Ezreal. I like his work. And, and, I like and his work. And what was the chick that turned into diamonds? Or? Emma, Emma Frost. Frost. Emma Frost. I said to me to Terry while we were watching this film that I've stood by it since the first time I laid my eyes on January Jones. If you were to make a poster, if you literally go to the dictionary and we want a picture for the term high maintenance bitch, boom. Yep. And from everything I've read about this chick, boom. boom. That is that is the most high maintenance bitch I've ever seen. And... I'm just going to throw out there. Um, acting isn't a skill that, like, I have big boobs. Oh, that means you're an actor. No, that's not how it works. You're shit. You're entire... Hello, I am Emma Frost. Look how my emoting and how excited I am to be here with... Is this my house? <laughs> What's my line? <laughs> What's she my line again? Crap. Yeah. She was horrendous. She was enjoyable. She was but good. yeah... None of it detracts from the film. That's what I cannot understand. <laughs> None of it. You sit there and you're like, ugh. How am I... Th- this has not detracted from my enjoyment of this film. What the fuck? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What the fuck? Th- I should be feeling like Brayden, but I don't. Yep. <laughs> Fair enough. So, yeah. Um, overall, this film... This film is just... A, I, I, I think it's just... A, one, it's an amazing piece on the 60s. It's yeah. an amazing piece mm-hmm. about the, the missile, the Cuban Missile Crisis mm-hmm. and the, the Cold War and that sort of <coughs> shit. Yep. It's an amazing piece about sexuality and gayness because ultimately in the 60s was when people started first being open about being gay and shit. Mm-hmm. That's ultimately what this mm. is trying to tell you is the mm-hmm. first okay class to be of different. Pe- yeah, the first mm. class of people <coughs> who were gay. Yep. Um, you know, that, 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 that all that is happening and yet underneath it all you just have this constant storyline of I'm going to find this fucking guy and I'm going to kill him. Yeah. And, like, it's shit. I honestly think Fassbender is the one that glues this film together, yeah, which, which says to me, because it's normally Ian McKellen is the, the piece that pushes it along, whereas Charles holds it together. It's flipped in this. Yeah. Charles pushes the film along. Ian, uh, Eric holds it together. Yeah. yeah. And I think, spoilers, spoilers for next year, you see that again. Yeah. Well, <coughs> I, I, I think it comes down to there's something about Michael Fassbender that is just inherently cool. Mm. Like I, I, I've stood by it since. Like I, this might make me sound a little bit like strange, but I, I find fashion and colours like I'm, I'm intrigued by that. Mm-hmm. I've never seen anybody who can wear brown and black and, and make, make it, it work. Cool. And I'm watching this guy, and I'm like, holy shit! Brown leather jacket, black turtleneck, yeah. blue pants, and it works. Yeah. 
Yeah. That, I don't understand. Yeah. This man is not. This man <laughs> is actually a mutant. <laughs> he's but a yeah. fashion mutant. Brayton is just dead. Brayton has died. <laughs> He's got nothing to say. We're, we're almost done, champ. It's okay. Yeah, we're almost. We're almost oh, I mean, I, I can't. I can't splooge on this. No, I, can't, not. I, I honestly. Just yeah. like, let, let's just let's just hand out some ratings, yeah. move on, because we've got a couple of other things still to come oh. uh, before we end the show. Uh, we do uh, a couple of surprises. So yeah, let's start off. Let's throw away our, our Barbaras for this film. I'm gonna give mine to Emma Frost. Yep. Jennifer Lawrence. I knew it was coming. <laughs> she didn't. Brayden. Yeah, I'm going Jennifer Lawrence plus all of the villains except for Kevin Bacon. What you didn't like, Farrah Hair Tornado Man? They there was nothing behind them. They were just you mean, I mean, no they were behind him. You mean Riptide. Okay, there was no character whatsoever. They, 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 were, they, they were the <laughs> they were the pawns in the chess game. They were just yeah. there. Yeah. It was just like, they were red shirts. They were, they were, you're right, they were red shirts. And Kevin Baker was like, I'm too busy for this shit. You guys are going to make it happen. Exactly. Oh, wait, you fucking crap. Damn it. Yep. All right, who are we giving Cranston's to? This is a fucking hard yep. one. Like. <sighs> yep. Well, I'll, I've, I've got one. I'm going to go uh, Charles Xavier and, and Magneto. I just loved the relationship between them. Mm-hmm. They really nailed that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's beautiful. You know, uh, he, he said it. He said it himself on the beach scene. Um, Magneto saying, "You know, we're supposed to do this together. We are brothers." Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I loved the relationship between them. They were great. I'm gonna give out the ba- the Bradys. You're giving out the Bradys. He's going to Brady I'm giving oh, the Bradys. Oh, Brady's. Look out! But it's going to the actors James McAvoy. Uh, what is it? Michael, Michael Fassbender. Fassbender. Bill, I'll never forget that name. Bill Milner. Bill Milner, which was young Eric, fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Kevin Bacon, and um, uh, Rose Byrne. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Rose Byrne. Moira, give it a bit of Moira love. Those those five actors, mm-hmm. for me, I can't. Like you said before, I cannot pick one of those actors out yeah, and not go. In your film falls apart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those yep. five actors sold that entire movie to me. Mm-hmm. And it was probably within the first half hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm, giving out, I'm giving out Brady's. Out Brady's. Brady's. Giving out Brady's. This is a, Brady's this is a, a fucking this is a Brady heavy I'm a fucking, episode. I'm a trendsetter, my <laughs> friends. <laughs> this is no. This film is literally one of the most ridiculous films we've ever reviewed. Re- Wait till we reviewed. get to the future part. Oh. We're just gonna sit there being like, we. Duh. In fact, we just won't do TV. We <laughs> just do Future Pass. I just um, don't know how but, we're going to handle but, awards for but, that episode. But it's going to be literally like it's going to be a five minute episode because it's going to be no TV. We're just going to be like, just watch the movie. In fact, yeah, we'll do a commentary episode. for that one. <laughs> yeah. we'll, do a commentary we'll have a. For that one. <laughs> right. So, uh, in order of uh, least influential to most influential, I'm uh, going Bill Milner, Young Eric. I'm going uh, Nicholas Hout, who played Hank and Beast. Hank or Beast? Well, Hank and Beast, so I should say. Uh, Oliver Platt, just because I thought he was a great character. Simpy. He was the, he was the only human with Simpy. I know. <laughs> with Simpy. Fassbender and McAvoy, <laughs> they are tied for first. Yeah. Um, Bacon just missed out. It's just, there's a little bit just of me that hates him. Still got sleep as hate? Yeah. I feel that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, I actually have one. I have one Fast Cranston. Right. Wow. I have one Cranston. Wait, who directed this son bitch or who wrote this son bitch? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Don't even try to guess. Just, 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 just let it, let just it let happen. happen. Just lie there. If you say, let it begin. <laughs> let Morgan it Lily, Young Raven. Hey, hey. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Doesn't matter. I think we'll fix it in post. Let it go. Hopefully, Adrian is playing Let It Go there. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> so hang on. Hang on, we'll try that again. Do, do it. Well, you just need to. Let it go! Let it go! Okay. But I really want to build a snowman. But, because, here's, here's, here's the answer. When I look back on this film, there is one performance above all else that leaves me with an emotional resonance. There's one, there is one performance in this film. That literally I connect with on a face level, and I walk away from this, and I'm like, "Yep, that is hands down the best character in this film. That is the, the best acted, the best performed, the most pathos, the most hubris in terms of character arc. Here's the most complete arc. 
He is the best full form character in this film. And Mike Cranston goes to Beast. Beast yeah. is hands down the best character in this film. Mm -hmm. Because he is the only one who brings what he brings on himself but handles it like a boss because at that, he could at that moment throw his hands up and just cry but he doesn't he just literally is like okay he gets angry but he's like okay I am what I am and I'm going to embrace it and he is the epitome of what they try to keep making with Raven with his mm. mutant and proud yeah. beast beast doesn't start out mutant and proud but that's what I mean by he full circles yeah. he full circles to I am so ashamed to be a mutant to you know what I built this jet I built everything I'm a fucking mutant Mm -hmm. And I'm going to rip your path. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're giving your Cranston to the young lad from About a Boy. I am giving the young lad from About a Boy, <laughs> the dirty, skeevy teenager from Skins, and the show cold body from Show me that smile. Don't waste another. Why the fuck are we just growing pains? Oh, because that was his full circle. Yeah, growing pains. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, fun fact uh, Beast and Angel acted together in Mad Max Fury Road. Do you know that actually got given this year film of the year from some whatever one of the one of the actual legitimate things? The best film of, oh, of this year was Mad Max Fury Road. Fuck off! And uh, the reason Angel got her job nobody saw like fucking Age of Ultron, mm. which was better than Avengers One. Yeah, your mate Angel played by Zoe Kravitz, Lenny's kid. Well, that explains why she wanted to fly away. Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! I'm out! <laughs> <laughs> and on that moment. Alright. What a. What, what are we doing? Uh, hang on, is it real? Brayden, did you give Cranston? Uh, yeah, I did, I did. Uh, Fast Bender and, and Fast, That's right, yeah. Okay, so glove this bitch out of five. How many gloves are you giving it? Eight. <laughs> I don't care. Eight. Okay, eight out of five. <laughs> Eat a dick. I, in fact, make those up, make up for break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, five for me. Five. So that's uh, what's that? That's uh, 18, eighteen out of fifteen so far. Two and a half. <sighs> twenty and a half I out don't, of twenty. I don't, I don't see. What's it on the board? That's going on the board. That's going on the board. I, I see this as a dark movie. I think the the darkness of this movie far outweighed the comedic stuff, and the comedic stuff wasn't that comedic, in my opinion. Yeah, but you're from Maui. You gotta remember this. Uh, oh, now mm. there was one thing we forgot to mention just mm. in uh, just in the movie, which I'd like to go back to since we're just wrapping up the movie, and that mm. was that uh, we talked about the the slight pedo vibe that we got off of Sebastian Shaw out of this film. Oh lord! There's a moment here I'd like to like to have the editor pop up, bring up the uh, the picture of Sebastian Shaw from the comics. Everybody have a look at that. Damn! Now, we thought Kevin Bacon looked a little bit creepy and pedo. Yeah, that's bad. That's uh, pretty bad. That's a whole new level of Braden hair right there. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's uh, Nosferatu <laughs> levels of... Nosferatu. <laughs> of, All right. Of pedo. All right, let's move on to the show, the end of the show part. Mm -hmm. We only have one letter from the Bat Sack, so let's do uh, last week's Badger of the Badger, Bat Sack, and then Badger of the Badger. All right. Um, oh, no, yeah, the, your favourite superhero f has lost their job in the Justice League. So what are they doing all their, with their, all their free time now? In the case of Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark, or, or Tony Stark if you wanted to play that card, uh, they've lost all their monies. So uh, any answers from the lads here? I've got three responses. So I have, I have one. You have one? Yeah, I've got one. No, I haven't got one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Brayden, give it to me. Uh, yep. Hit me all with right, your well, best shot. Aquaman, yep, Aquaman's been booted. Aquaman's <laughs> been booted, and boy, does he hate SeaWorld. He's boycotting those motherfuckers and he's breaking out those fish. Ah, okay, so he's a liberator of fish. Yes. Okay. okay. You ready? Yeah. You ready? Captain America? Mm-hmm. Army sign up. <laughs> he's working in recruiting. He's just going door to door. <laughs> Citizen? Have you seen the shield? <laughs> Get in the van. Get in the van. Thank <laughs> you. Starts his own, starts his own army. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I think he's doing. I think Captain America's getting a militia. <laughs> the Minutemen. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, I'll give. I actually, yeah. <laughs> I actually, actually, I have, I have a secondary. Okay, answer for cool. later. Yeah. No, it's for later. It's okay, for later. cool. So I went through. I, I, there's a couple I thought of. <clears throat> Aquaman. 
He is now a dolphin trainer at SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. I saw that one as well. Uh, Cyborg <laughs> is now working the IT help desk at Apple. <laughs> Even better working at your Apple store. <laughs> the Flash is now working for UPS and is looking at swapping over to FedEx because FedEx have more money and a better healthcare plan. Uh, who else was there? <laughs> Uh, and then you've got uh, Dick Grayson's gone back to the circus, which may not end well. And there was another one I came up with. Ah, oh, got it. So, give me your second one. The other one might come back to me. Okay, Deadpool has <laughs> joined Jim Rose Circus <laughs> <laughs> with Nightwing. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, just join the freak show. <laughs> <laughs> just join the freak show. Um, oh, okay. You want more? Wonder Woman. Join the joy ride. Oh God. She-Hulk webcam girl. <laughs> She's what? Wolverine and She-Hulk on webcam together. Okay, there's another one. Wolverine, he's quit his job. Drunk. No, I was going to go with Butcher. That's a good one. I'll take my pop cap now. That's a good one. <laughs> um, but I've got three responses. Uh, the Prez at Allman Org says Tony Stark becomes a pimp. Which kind of... I wouldn't be surprised with. Uh, Kevin Went... Isn't that the mayor? That's the mayor. That's the mayor. Who? Kevin is Wend, the mayor. Wend is the mayor. Mayor! Yeah, him. Uh, he confessed he only put uh, 30 seconds of thought into this because, you know... Well, he's he, busy politicking mayor to get shittier into No, it. actually, he, he says that's how much he cares about us. Oh. That's because we don't live in Maui. We might care about brain. That's true. But uh, he's going for he's Green Arrow. He's going for Green Arrow. He's going for Green Arrow as a competitive archer, possibly Olympic level. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Uh, the Question Queen has answered with uh, Batman as a child's entertainer. Nice. And she asked if we could do villains, uh, so the Joker wants to be a group therapist. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, uh, no. I, 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 thought, I thought I won, I thought I won. You're ready? Mm. Oliver Queen, Leanne, you tour guide. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Travel <Hey>. agent. <laughs> My pop cap now. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll take one. We'll, we'll have one each. <clears throat> Would, is Thor part of the Justice League? No, but we'll give you yeah, it. We'll, no, no, no. We can yeah, have Thor. Thor. You can oh, have his, yeah. oh, I just thought of one for it. I, I was just thinking, like, pranks. Like, yeah, you know, model. No, no, no. Like, you, Thor Real. You know, you know, the pranksters videos yeah. where they do public pranks and stuff. Yeah. It's just like public toilets. Thor's hammer. Oh, my God. Son of a bitch. It could be a carpenter with his... Um, yeah. I was going to go for meteorologist. Meteorologist? <laughs> so you can finally work with his girlfriend? Uh-huh. Bruce Banger, anger therapy. Anger management, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! Charles Xavier with, like, self-hypnosis to stop smoking. <laughs> and, you know, so he becomes she, a mentalist. Yeah. Oh, I forgot this bit. Uh, Spider-Man becomes the anthropologist. <laughs> no, I imagine Spider-Man would be, like, He's, you know when you, you know the, the guys that go around and glow up those big billboard signs? <laughs> he's got to climb up there in front of him. He's a billboard replacement. <laughs> Scott Summers, sheet metal welder. <laughs> Boiler agent, yeah, yeah, nice, nice, nice. Oh, God, who else have we got? Uh, <laughs> Charles Xavier becomes a fortune teller. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Magneto is one of those guys that God plates Storm becomes a weather girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Storm, Storm becomes, becomes a, a weather, weather girl. girl. <laughs> oh God. Hulk would actually. Well, he's already doing a professional bodybuilding. Oh, Be- oh, oh, <laughs> Earth Mover. <laughs> Earth Mover. Beast. Beast becomes like wildlife sanctuary conserve guy because he fits in with all the animals, yeah. or like Cat Den Mother or something. <laughs> <laughs> Safari tour guy. <laughs> nice. And these are my people. Black Panther, so tour guide. That's what I imagine. Yeah, yeah Black Panther is tour guide. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh god. All right, so uh, um, I imagine uh, Doctor Strange becomes like Las Vegas magician. <laughs> <laughs> he signs a contract for like one year deal and he's like, like in the like, mirage. Yeah. <laughs> At the Trump that Towers, Mister Freeze becomes like the, the ice scraper. <laughs> no, he's a mystery. <laughs> No, no, he, he, he's, uh, he's, the, he's the guy that puts, like, you know how you get oh, ice no, cubes in no, there no. and just fill out the bags? No, he's, he, he refreezes the ice rinks. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that, thank you very much for your answers. We will I debate. I think Flash becomes a burger chef. Or, yeah, that... Tip- well, no, a sushi uh, chef. No, no, what's the... Uh, the, the, the Teppanyaki. Teppanyaki chef, yeah. Teppanyaki chef. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs>
All right, so that's uh, we'll, we'll discuss who gets the uh, pop cap. Yeah, we'll work that out. We'll have a better royale. All right, so let me bring up the email, the one email that I've got. Yeah. What have you done? All right, this one comes from Trent Thunder. Oh God. <laughs> right, and Trent writes in to ask. Now Trent's not all that eloquent. I'm going to apologise. None of you I are. Might, I may have to. He is Irish though, so it's fitting with the theme of this show. So he's a relative of Fastbender, who's also related to the Rock. Yeah, well, he's put his helmet Just, on. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was going to say, does he wear a helmet? Oi! Oi! It's, it's, wait, go ahead. No, sure. Oi, you dirty bastards. How are you today? Are you doing well? That's good. <laughs> like I said, he's not, he's not super open. I've written in a question that I wouldn't have answered. I'd like to know if Matt... <laughs> Matt you! I'd like to know if Matt has a problem with the boys giving him so much shit about the way he looks or the way he talks or the way he is. That's question number one that I'd like answered. Question number two that I have is very simple. Over the past 52 episodes you guys have done, I'm sure it's been very good. I've only listened to three of them because we only just got the internet here in Ireland. But, of the three episodes I've listened to, I'm just wondering if, if the, of any of the 52 you've done, if there's anything you would go back in time and do over again. Yep. Anyway, thanks for answering my question, guys. Have a great night. Matt, have a great beard one year. Hey, sir. Merry Christmas. Well, thanks, Trent. So, Matt. We've got Trent. Question number one. How do, how, do you, how do you feel about the shit you've been giving this shit? Oh, you're all... Um, Klein biscuits. <laughs> Klein biscuits. But that's fair. Yeah, as you as you so eloquently pointed out, that we're all we're, dicks. We're all dicks. So yeah, yeah. We're all what? Dicks. You're all dicks. He's a dick. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a dick. Dicks. Fuck You're... assholes. Yeah, and pussies. That's why <laughs> dicks are the best. Yeah, but but nobody likes assholes. No. no. They just shit going. all over everybody. Yeah, but it, I mean, that's only on Friday nights. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, and then question number two. So of the episodes we've all done this year, is there anything we would do ever again? Yep. Episode one. Episode one. Yeah. Do you remember how long that fucking thing went for? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's about five and a half hours edited. <laughs> We're getting close it was to that. Like this fucking ridiculous. Well, that is true. Um, not that I was. There I'm pretty for. sure I just had a, a pair of headphones plugged into me phone and had a <laughs> <stuff going. laughs> Just walking yeah. around. Walking, yeah, that's pretty We've sure that's how we were. Way. We'll get to that. We'll get to that next year. Uh, next year. Uh, next I week. mean, the the only problem, the only one I'd probably redo, is when I first came here and I fucked up my intro. Oh, we can say hello properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's I'd really, fair. I'd, I think that I'd redo that. A reappearing. No, no, he's moved on from intros to synopsis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one he fucked up, the other one takes a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> you fuck face. You absolute dead bag, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. is there a ba- is there a final badge of the badge of question? There is. Um with uh Spectre that came out. Oh sorry, hey, what am I talking about? Braden, anything you do over this year? Fuck fuck Braden, he's got shit opinions. Uh, <laughs> Go I back so distracted. Jennifer no, no Lawrence? Regret. That's what you redo. No regrets. Good. No regrets. Redo. Redo. No, Are you I'm sure good. you sure you don't want to like redo the Iron Man two episode. Man I don't think episode. I don't think I want to read with that. You, well, you're gonna have to. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so badge the badge of this hey, week. Hey, hey. Oh. Is there anything you do over again? I said episode one. Oh, you did too. Do you want to yeah. know what I do over again then, you bastard? Asking me the same question twice. Episode three. You play butter, motherfucker. Episode three. <laughs> episode three. Episode three. Is that what with, was episode three? Is that, Sponge Biscuit? No, that was... Adam West, 66 Batman. Oh, yeah. I would not do that episode over again. However, I'd actually... However, no, I, would, was I would do over episode four. <laughs> and I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that and say there is there is an element of episode four that I would remove. Hey. Had I had 2020 hindsight. Hey, do you know what we should do after this? Clean up? Beaker, bro. With Sponge? Yeah, don't, yeah. Um... I don't mind if I just play the Xbox A. <laughs> so anyway, what's the badge of the badger for this year? Badge of the badger. The final. The badger final of the badge of the badger is uh, what? 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 Where's my man do? If you were to, if you were, <laughs> That's the final. <laughs> where's my man do? Uh, if you were to come up with a, a theme song for a JLA movie, who would you get to sing it? Who is who is he was the songstress or song Stir. Stir <laughs> That you would actually get to sing your uh, your theme to your JLA movie. So if it was like a Bond film. 
like the Bond intro thing. Yeah, so, yeah, same sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't have to have that tone. No, 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 yeah. no I'm, just, I'm just imagining that you're saying there's like something happens. I've been hearing a lot of Adele lately, so maybe that's what I'm thinking with Skyfall. That okay. was a really good song. I did she does well. Especially compared to the shit one they did for... Sam Smith. Yeah. Sam Smith. I did music. Anyway. So yeah, alright. Well, that brings mm. us to the end of episode 522. Once again, as you can see below... Here's the link to go to it. Um, right at the end after the, the video package runs, please stand by. There will be a special advert that you'll see from us advertising everything a lot more in full. Um, but it is episode 52. It's been one hell of a year. Uh, we have one episode left to go. That is the end of year awards next year. We'll be recapping all our favourite moments from the year gone by, plus the week on TV. Uh, meaning there will be no film, but there will be some films in there for you all to enjoy, uh, I'm sure. Uh, but in the meantime... What a year it's been so far. Look forward mm. to next week's uh, final episode of the year. But mm. was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I've never seen Matt and Braden yell at each other before, so <laughs> this show phenomenal. was phenomenal. It only took a year, <laughs> but uh, it finally that happened. So it will take another year for the next one. Oh, I don't mm. think it will. Yeah, it'll bullshit. take till days of future past. By the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, so let's wrap it up for tonight. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to regret this, I know. But I'm going to follow a trend from last week. Oh, God. Matt. Oh, no. Why don't you send us home tonight? What do you want? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'd like to say goodbye to everyone. Or... So long and say... Oh, my God. Sorry. Fucking... I didn't, I didn't know where you were going with that. It's too, right. too busy hating on idiot features still. You know? <laughs> Alright, we'll throw it over to Mo. Let's try it over there. Let's go to the social media lounge so that the Bray Knight can give us all the social media info for one last time for this year and then send us off to bed. So if you want to tell us about your favourite moment for the year, hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash fromthebatcave. Send us an email at fromthebatcave.podcast at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter at twitter.com slash fromthebatcave. Thank you at, from all of us at From the Back Cave. I've been your host, <laughs> the Dad Knight, Braden Hearn. <laughs> and with me, as <laughs> usual, a bunch of dickheads. He's Red Thunder, it. Adam Gerard. He's <laughs> Honey Badger, all Terry O'Neill. Bye. And the probe, Matt Richard. See ya. See you, folks. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Yes, I'm Batman. Telegram. I am Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. You sound like Cookie Monster. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I'm Batman. This has been a Cabana production.